Somebody talk. <laughs> Somebody talk. <laughs> oh, they, they wound the key on the big inter internet machine and we came alive. Alive. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to Saving Throw Show from the comfort of my house in Australia. It's Sunday morning. Good news. The world didn't end yet. Uh, Yay! Hurrah! Good news from the future. <laughs> um, we are here tonight to play Shadow of the Demon Lord, a dark fantasy game uh, designed by Rob Schwab. Uh, if you like dark fantasy and are looking for another D20 game, then you're in for a treat. Check out this beautifully designed game. If you don't like dark fantasy, uh, you should go and look at, I don't know, Baby Goats or something, because this might not be the show for you. <laughs> But to be um, fair, I believe Rob is going to kickstart a new non-dark fantasy version of this game. Uh, is he uh, now? Called uh, yeah, like Weird World of the Mad, uh, Weird World of the of the of it the is. Of you, the you've wizard you've nailed it. You've nailed it. Uh, mm -hmm. Shadow Shadow of the Weird Wizard. Shadow it's of the Weird all Wizard. Of the, wizard yep. All of the game design, but with a more kind of a heroic kind of classic fantasy spin. Uh, but uh, tonight. It's all about the darkness. And the darkness of the internet has already claimed one of us. Uh, Bria is uh, joining us when technology permits. It is a terrible conspiracy, so apologies from her. But I'm joined by some fine people. Introduce yourselves. I'll start. Yeah. Hey, everyone. My name's Stephen Pope. I'll be playing Copper, the uh, constable, apothecary, robot man warrior. <laughs> Welcome. How many That's different great. titles do you have? Mine I'm just sorry. Like, Where are yours? Mine says priests. <laughs> uh, well, step up your game. You know, get on my get level. On his level, yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 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 hey everyone, I'm below Stephen Pope's level. I don't know if that's literally <laughs> or figuratively because I don't have the window open. But you are um, a dwarf, so <laughs> I'm Ooh. Tom Blommel. Uh, I'm. I'm your friend. Apparently, I'm fine people, according to Mark's introduction, which I have to say, I'm really enjoying this visit to Australia. It's great to be here in Mark's house. I'm really having a great time. And um, I hope everyone back in America is uh, holding on for the next six months while I'm here in exile. <clears throat> I only wish that was true. I am playing Orem, the dwarf priest. It's two things. A dwarf, dwarf, dwarf and priest. And a priest. <laughs> Not not just alcoholic. You're gonna leave those off. No. I just mean dwarf and priest. Al alcoholic. That's a lifestyle, not a title. A goblin <laughs> snuggler. <laughs> just saying, there's a lot there. But dragon smoocher. I mean dragon sm <laughs> smoocher of dragons. And in the last corner. I'm Jameson. I'll be playing Licko the Goblin. He is a rogue goblin by Tom standards. Uh, we like to keep it simple. Uh, my name is Mark Morrison. I'm partially responsible for campaign coins. I also write a lot of stuff, Call of Cthulhu stuff for Chaosium, hence the darkness. Uh, my pronouns are he and him. Um, will you, if you enjoy this game, we're going to give away a PDF uh, direct from Rob Schwab uh, in the chat. Uh, we always spring this without working out what it's going to be. So I'm going to leave it to Dom. Uh, in the chat to work out what the uh, qualification is for that. This is a how dare you? How dare oh. you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is the first time Dom has ever been uh, forced to run a giveaway on an impromptu basis. So I'm not sure he's up to mm -hmm. it. But maybe, maybe by two hours into the game, we'll have it have it straightened out. Now, it is also September on Twitch. Um, it's no surprise that creators around the world are doing it hard right now as audiences and our ability to get art to the people and be respected for the art is seems to be curtailed more than ever. So you can support your favourite Twitch streamers because they've been a godsend during lockdown. Uh, they might be these people. I don't know. It's possible. Uh, so you can support the saving throw with a subscription during September. You get a discount they get to keep the lights on, um, which is a fantastic deal. I've been a subscriber for many years. Um, so, uh, and also, if you subscribe tonight or re-up, you get to give a boon to the players or a bane to me. Ooh. If you are a bad person, just like, uh, oh, who was it? Thunder Cabbage has already given me a bane. Uh, but Draconique, who's got you back, uh, has given a boon to the players. So I'm going to put that oh, right thank there. Thank you. 
So keep those <laughs> booms coming and banes if you're a bad person, because these are bad times. The shadow of the demon lord is upon us. Our story begins. Our story begins with bang, the sharp rap of a gavel on a high judicial bench. And there is a figure there in a great long coat with gleaming gold buttons. We cannot see the figure's face because it is a mirror, a shining mirror. All we can see is the reflection of a person in the dock as they are pronounced guilty and behind them, three people are uh, in, the, in the, the, the front benches directly behind the guilty party. And those three people are our heroes. And I use the term loosely. Uh, so, please, in that bang, guilty. And what has happened is your boss has just been pronounced guilty. And they are absolutely guilty. Let's not weasel around. You can't dice your way out of this one. Uh, Tom Lummel, I'm looking at you. Uh, <laughs> they are guilty for a crime that we will shortly explore. But in that moment, bang, when the gavel comes down and guilty, uh, the sentence is to be hanged at dawn tomorrow. Unless the fine is paid, the fine will be six copper, six silver, and six gold. Now, for the people at home, uh, actually, we're all at home. <laughs> so, so, for all of us, really, uh, let's have a visual description of your character in that moment. Bang! When you realise all is all is done, and if your description is uh, is uh, exciting and cool or disgusting and creepy, I'll take either. I'm going to give you a fortune token. Um, fortune is a must-have in Shadow of the Demon Lord because it's not a re-roll; it's just my d20 worked. I hit that thing. So believe me, you want fortune. You can also use fortune to give a friend two boons. You don't have any friends. Uh, or you can take any D6 and say, you know what? It's a six. Of course, my, my dice have got demon logos on them. But anyway, nice. fortune is good. So bang, down comes the gavel. Uh, let us have a description of the tall figure. The tall, the tallest figure in the dock. What do we see? So you see a man made entirely out of brass, and I use the term man loosely. His body is basically a large kettle, and his head is that of uh, it's a perfect sphere with a uh, painted on face that's kind of cracked and sort of falling off. And it was definitely made to make him look a little less intimidating, and it's just doing the exact opposite. His uh, long, lanky sword uh, drawn arms are lying limply by his side, and his legs are basically up to his chest as he sits in the small uh, court pew, wondering, well, what am I going to do for my next job after this? <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you, Copper. You get fortune. All Woo! right. In descending height, who is the bearded figure? So you see a uh, rather sullen-looking dwarf uh, with magnificently groomed huge handles, handlebar mustache that actually overflows uh, his excellently coiffed beard. <clears throat> and uh, he's wearing uh, thick uh, uh, robes, uh, clearly designed um, a, a, a sort of a, of a, like a heavy leather construction, not uh, not for fighting, but more for uh, fending off the elements uh, and the blood. <clears throat> uh, he has a um, he uh, he has brigandine armor underneath that. He leans on a heavy staff, and uh, tuck, tucked into uh, his pocket is an enigmatic square that just sort of like uh, bulges underneath uh, his his. Uh, his his robes and and no one has ever seen him actually like remove it from his robes but it, it's always sort of there uh omnipresently and every once in a while anyone who who dares get close enough hears a faint ticking coming from it um the gavel goes down and you see him blink once and then think to himself well i'm a cleric of earth and i'm a cleric of life so if I can't bring him back from the dead, at least he'll have a good burial. 
fortune for you. <laughs> Welcome, Oram, Dwarven Priest. One last figure in the dock. Uh, Licko is a very small goblin with very large ears and two big tusks that hook upwards. Uh, he, for some reason undisclosed, is drenched, just soaked uh, to the bone. You don't know how he got wet, but he's wet, and that, combined with Licko, uh, doesn't smell good. Uh, and he is sobbing just openly, loudly over the judge's gavel, just <laughs> crying. Moss, why? And while he's also weeping, any jurors or anyone that's near him, he's slowly sliding a hand into their pockets to grab whatever he can, lick it, and then put it back in his pockets. All right, welcome, Licko. Mm -hmm. um, that is your plan as you do the, the ostentatious crying. But there are no jurors around because there is no jury. There is only the judge. Mm -hmm. I am the judge of beauty. The sentence is absolute. The fine will be paid by dawn or the prisoner will hang. Court dismissed. Um, and as you are weeping, Lico, Bailiff, Bailiff Prendergast, who's kind of a, a small man who's kind of got, you know, many books under each arm, he, he sees you crying and he comes over and he gives you a perfectly um, kind of ironed and clean handkerchief uh, or, or a hanky, as we say in Australia. So uh, when he sees you start to lick it... Uh, he, he's, yeah, that's that's what he meant. Um, the judge is rising, and uh, your boss is swooning in the dock. Now, for the purpose of this scenario, I have not defined who your boss is. I would like us to explore that now. I would like you to tell me who they are. This much I can tell you. Well, this is something I want to tell you right now. If you enter, use the code enter giveaway in the chat, and because it's Twitch land, you have to put an exclamation mark before it. And to give away one word, you can win a PDF for Shadow of the Demon Lord. So thanks for Very watching. Very nice. Um, yay, yay, Rob Schwab. Uh, so the boss. Now, in our, our last episode last year, you were all in a forest and you just murdered a man and then exploded him. Uh, and yeah, that, kind of, that kind of put you on the run. And in in self-defense. Uh, and yeah, and, and in fact, uh, uh, Lico, you are a very corrupt goblin. You have three corruption, which means you are just one corruption point away from you know dogs bark at you. Well, they bark at you more. Uh, so, uh, so this was uh, uh, Copper. You have no corruption at all. You are literally nope. straight up. And uh, Orem, you had a bad moment of uh, of seeing uh, Lico's side of things, but you've you've got back to the the ancestors and the adults and let's face it i host you that was unfair but sucks to be you tom lummel uh so you were <laughs> all in pure trouble. driven snow you were in trouble in the forest and you got out to the next town and there were a group of swords of astrid they are the the kind of holy warriors of the new god and they said you four because that time you're also with your friend amaka uh and she is a, a captain of the army and her eyes are now pools of darkness no pupil no iris just pools of darkness every time you since you went into that forest uh so somebody said they're with me and that was your boss literally came out of nowhere and rescued you to work for them so let's freestyle it who's your boss who was it okay um i think he's an orc uh yes so definitely. we've established two things uh yeah it uh male uh and orc okay all right so there's boss big teeth yep all right, thank you, Stephen. What else can we so let's get for I someone think else? That, uh, possibly he's too smart for his own good, or at least he thinks he is, especially okay, in white society. Orking glasses, yes, uh, which he doesn't it. need. He just wears them to look smart. No lone okay. lenses whatsoever. All right, okay, perfect. Uh, Tom, what is uh, his profession? Because we know that he says they work for me, so he's he's now your employer. Uh, what what's what's his uh, racket? Uh, I think he's some sort of like uh, either bootlegger or black marketeer kind of like trades in illicit goods. 
Great. So let's uh, boot, bootlegger, uh, not bootlicker, that's liquor. Uh, so, all right. So there he is with a, with a great big kind of wagon uh, full of alcohol. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, of, of dubious uh, distillation from, from strange stills deep in the forest. People have a, a liking for fairy wine, for the fermented kind of, you know, uh, output of goblins. Let's not dwell on that one. Uh, and other strange and exotic brews, some of which you have sampled. How were they? You're quite the connoisseur, Aurum. So the first night after he rescued, says, we should celebrate. We should celebrate as, as friends uh, our fortunate meeting. What can I get you? Um, so he, uh, um, he procures a very um, syrupy liqueur uh, that... Uh, is uh, strictly of Orcish provenance, right? Like it's a it's a closely held Orcish secret how they brew this stuff, um, but uh, it is uh, it is it is called Hellhound's milk, and uh, oh. and it is uh, uh, a a dark brown color, um, and you have to drink it uh, while it's uh, served flaming. So it has to be the only the only way. To, if you if you don't drink it while it's um, w while it's literally on fire, then it doesn't have any alcoholic effect, right? You have to imbibe it while it while it while it's aflame. Um, yeah, um, and I've I never had we... it before. And uh, and and uh, Orem th is actually entranced by how delicious it is. All right. Mm. Well, as it's about to be served for you, um, I would like a name for the boss. Oh. Uh, or sh should we should we let chat name them? Let's Why not? You're right there, chat. <laughs> All right, kind of oh, chat. Mark. But I get editorial. I'm looking at you, <laughs> tap chat Asima. You know I what? The, the, the choice among six goof ass choices is not a, a less goof ass choice, buddy. <laughs> uh, well, a lesser of two goof asses. <laughs> All right, right, look. You are mean people because mm -hmm. chat has just given you John the Orc. Now, John, I hope you I all John feel bad about the wonderful saving throw. Uh, uh, yeah, he's not <laughs> going to be called Boaty McBoatface. What's going his middle John name? Boaty McBoatface. <laughs> uh, he's John. Uh, my name's John. Uh, and you know, he also, that's, because that's, he's... A that's hard for me as a dwarf to pronounce. Do you mind if I call you Boaty? <laughs> I, I just like can't pronounce. Face. I can't pronounce yays. If it makes you more comfortable, you may call me that. Of course, I, Thanks, I'm Bodie. all for your comfort. Uh, and uh, also, because he's an orc of means with the with the glasses to make him look distinguished, he has a servant uh, called Mister Crumpet. And Mr. Crumpet is this kind of grey man. He's like an old family retainer. I don't know, maybe he used to work for some vigilante who got killed. Uh, and so he's this kind of very proper gentleman. And uh, he is stepping forwards with the, uh, with the hellhound's milk. Uh, and uh, he's got the lit torch. Uh, uh, you might all wish to stand back. Uh, and he lights the hellhound's milk like three... Uh, uh, actually, no, Mr. Crumpet is, a, is an impeccable servant, so he doesn't he doesn't. He apologizes to you, Copper. Uh, I'm sorry that you cannot partake of this, but I understand. It is not for you. Oh, sorry, he has to look up. You're ten feet tall. It is it not is for you, sir. Oh, All it's right. fine. I sure, sure right. that won't oil the gears or something, or maybe uh, uh, supercharge the old uh, pot boiler there. I'm uh, pretty sure it'll just kind of go through me and come out the other end, so same as you. Yes, that's how that works. <laughs> yeah. All I'm, right. I don't know. <laughs> Up goes the, uh, this is the secret now of why Mr. Crumpet has no eyebrows. Uh, as woof, off uh, goes the, uh, the, the hellhound's milk, and it is served to you flaming. Uh, oh, my goodness. That's, that, that is amazing stuff. <clears throat> it's extraordinary. Uh, just for a moment, in fact, you might want to make a, uh, a strength roll for me. Uh, no reason. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in Shadow of the Demon Lord, um, you have challenges, and all you have to do is beat 10. Um, and you roll the dice and just add the modifier. And ca characters um, have a statistic of around 10. So Aurum's strength is 11. So add plus one to the d20. How'd you go? Mm -hmm. 
I got a 17. Fantastic. Um, and also, at any point, you can, of course, pray to the Dwarven Gods uh, and give yourself a free boon uh, just by uttering a short prayer there, uh, Orem. All right, so it is great stuff. Lico, how did your strength roll go? As you have oh, the... Oh, my strength uh, roll. The, uh, assuming you're drinking the Hell Hounds. Oh, yeah, of course. Or are you uh, just I'm, licking it? I, I, I think that he would try and lick the fire. You realizing, that he, realizing he can't take it out. Just, ah! <laughs> all at once. Uh, what is drinking but licking? <laughs> it's it's extreme. long licking, yes. All right. I'm going to delve into the details of how let's, that's let's, not an apt comparison, but... No, um, let's not. Please do. <laughs> do it on so, Twitter. Let's do it on Twitter. <laughs> Whoosh! Uh, how was it, Lico? What did you think of uh, Hell Hounds Mill? Um, it was probably the best thing that Lico has ever had, and he is taking his extremely long tongue and just trying to get every inch of the inside of the glass. So you just see it's like almost like a mosquito tongue flicking around in there. Lico, that's on Coop. All right. It's good. Uh, I like it. So you were rescued by John, the, uh, the bootlegging orc. Um, and as you travel together, um, you eventually find out his name is actually Gargak. Uh, but he uses, <laughs> but it's pronounced Gargak. Uh, but he, he he uses the word John uh, just to you know ease the way, and uh, he has. A, I, have, he I ha can't really yeah. pronounce uh, geese either. So is it okay if I just call you Bodhi? Uh, of course, of course, or you may, you may refer to me as you will. Uh, now, oh. uh, I, right. I, well, why don't I just call you Tusks? <laughs> uh, yes, I'm I'm comfortable if you are comfortable, Orem. Uh, and of course, his dwarf what? pronunciation is impeccable. He's the only one that gets in the silent, quiet voice of the ancestors. Like no one else can pronounce. It's a very long, silent syllable. Nobody else can pronounce that. But um, he actually makes you feel at home. Uh, uh, and Mr. Crumpet is really a fantastic traveling companion because all of your leather is is kept nicely, kind of oiled. Um, he irons your clothing if you wish it ironed. He'll iron your tongue if you want that ironed. Um, the only thing he doesn't do is he doesn't um, polish you copper. I, I'm sorry, I am not a metalsmith. Oh, sorry, I am not a metalsmith in any way. So uh, I, 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 you're out of my skill set. Um, and same goes for armor and weapons. I'm sorry. You're fine. All right. Am I um, right that uh, human urine is an antioxidant? Is that I've? That's just something that I've. I will step yeah, on you. All urine. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm a I'll dwarf. Step on so, you as well. So don't worry. I just wondering if you needed us to go squeeze some humans over you or something. <laughs> I don't all want right. you to. I don't want you seizing up on me. So I will pick you up and I will throw you. <laughs> Help you get to the humans faster. Thank you. Um, and, and and bickering as you do, even though you now know your fates are entwined because you were all on the run for several murders, admittedly, all of the people you murdered had it coming, see last episode. <laughs> but, Lico, in the night, whenever you're in the woods, sometimes you wake in the dawn and you can see the bloodied face of Wilfred the teenager staring at you accusingly from out of the branches. All right. Anyway. Uh... I mean, that, that kid betrayed his whole village. I felt like he had it coming. Yeah. <laughs> I would feel bad, but I'm physically incapable of feeling anything. So you arrived in beauty and uh, set up the shingle um, and beauty is in the, the, um, the nation I of the Dean. <laughs> uh, it is that too. Um, Adin is like the, the kind of an old kingdom where things are done properly and correct and the nobility holds sway. And it's a bit of a quiet backwater and therefore quite a place for people who are on the run for several murders to, to go. Um, and as you're traveling, you can see that, you know, these are hard times indeed. As, as I told you uh, the last time that the emperor is dead, he's been strangled on the alabaster throne. So everybody is kind of disquieted and there are kind of rumors. And one thing people are doing is they're really buying up all the food. So markets seem very sparse as everyone is starting to stockpile food. Um, and, uh, of course, you came from Grantham where the crops had failed. So uh, 
people are very excited to try a flaming beverage, which is which is delicious, and it goes horribly, horribly wrong uh, when you set up the cart, uh, which says, you know, John's uh, Beverages of Distinction uh, in the square. Um, there is uh, 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 he's uh, Gargak steps forward, John, and uh, says, "I present the Hellhounds Milk." And he lights it up. The flame goes whoosh, and some freakish updraft just runs it straight up the roof of the building, uh, which is a granary. And the well, whole no thing good. just goes up. And with food so scarce, um, uh, you wanna, you, you, maybe you tried to put it out. Why don't you have strength rolls to see if you had any kind of uh, success in saving yeah. some of the grain? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a 17. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, yeah, nine, right, Lico. Nine Lico's plus on one fire. is ten. Fantastic. So there is Aurum doing his best, assuming you're doing your best. There is Copper firefighting. Lico, is it true that you're actually just using this opportunity to milk the crowd, as it were? Are you stealing yes, things? Absolutely. Right. Perfect. All right. Um, but it is a kind of a wild and kind of smoky scene. Um, you uh, uh, um, uh, make your uh, agility roll as you, and don't forget, you can always be tricky about things. As a, as a rogue in Shadow of the Demon Lord, you could throw a boon on it. So the way boons and banes work is if you have a boon, you roll a d6 and add it to your d20. If you have a bane, you roll a d6 and take it from the d20. If you have one of each, they cancel out. If you have two boons, you only get the best roll. You don't get to add them together. So how did your uh, uh, opportunistic fevery go? I got an 18 Fantastic. without any All boons right. or banes or anything. All right, great. So uh, you managed to get D6 coppers. Have a roll. I have six of you. <laughs> How'd you go? You rolled six. Oh, I'm oh, sorry. No, so yeah, rolled six. six. <laughs> but yeah, one five. D six is, is this run. You got five coppers. All right, fantastic. And uh look, look at these fine metal coins. Uh mm -hmm. campaigncoins.com product placement. Uh I'm just gonna put them in this chest here. Because you guys are actually destitute. Um, all of the your salaries have been going into the enterprise, uh, which you do believe in because John's a straight up guy, a straight up hawk. And not only that, but all, all our job seems to do is trying to decide how to polish copper. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like, you know, the salary is commissioned with the responsibilities, to be honest. Uh, no, you also have been, uh, you know, serving the drinks, crowd control, uh, carrying things around. But mostly you're there for security because mm. he has a wagon of incredibly valuable uh, and rare orcish liqueur. So that's really what he hires you for. And now, along the road, you have stopped some trouble. Bodie, I have to tell you that as your chief of security, probably the best place to put this is someplace like, like up against a wall, like maybe over by that granary over there so that we don't have people coming in from all different directions. You know, there's only one approach. We can do crowd control and set up a rope line and make sure that everything is very safe and secure. Uh, yeah, right it. where that That's overhang it. is from the... From the, uh, out of out of the soft rain. That is a perfect suggestion. Yeah. Thank you very much, Orem. Right uh, by uh, this uh, giant cop, slide cop, where they load cop, all cop. the silage in. <clears throat> now, by the way, he, he doesn't actually have a mule. You just carry the cart around, Copper. Oh, yeah. So you yeah. just pick up the two <laughs> kind of things. Your ten foot tall clockwork. So um where it is, we are back to where we started. Guilty. Uh there is no doubt. You set that, that granary on fire. Guilt is absolute. It was a, a terrible scene. You managed to save some of the granary, and maybe that's kind of allowed some leniency in the fact that you can pay a fine. Uh, you haven't seen Mr. Crumpet since the blaze. Um, you fear that he was burned to death. Uh, have not seen him. Uh, bang. There it is. The sentence has been pronounced. You are all flat stony broke and you must get six copper six silver and six gold the so, court the court is rising um and uh you can see bailiff prendergast is coming forwards to kind of answer any questions but uh the the judge of beauty with the mirror mask uh he stands in the bench and uh says you three you are the associates of the guilty, correct? 
Well, I mean, I certainly am. Yes, employees sir. technically. Um, I don't know. And, and you? He's indicating Lico. Ah, uh, he boss. Yes. Good. Then this is the law of beauty. You must attend the execution. If you do not attend the execution, that is a crime, punishable in turn by death. You will be pronounced as associates to the crime. I will see you in the morning. I, just to be clear about attending this whole execution thing, are, should we bring sparklers or any kind of noisemaker or anything? Uh, what's, what, I'm not clear what sort of affair this is. I, I, I know dwarven rituals. I don't know what you all do. Okay, we can so we can bring some of uh, the hound's tooth milk. What, what was it called again? Yeah, oh, hellhound yeah. milk. You want a little fireworks display? We, we yeah. can light that up. <clears throat> you know, right, so so while you are burbling away, um, I, I mean, great role playing, Tom. Uh, the judge of beauty is pronounced the, the sentence, given you your instructions, and is not listening to a word of this. Uh, he rises from the bench. He's got a long coat. You can see the green gleam of gold buttons upon the coat. He is flanked by two golden eyes. Now, you have seen the golden eyes uh, in town, Copper. You marked them instantly. They are clockworks. They are a mere eight foot tall. Their eyes are, are, are solid gold, uh, the coins of beauty. One side shows head, the other side shows tails. And they march in a clockwork fashion around the town on prescribed patrol routes. Um, and there's almost no point in a street in beauty when there is not a clockwork visible at one end or the other with these very intricate patrol routes so finely calibrated like the, like the gears of a clock that they all pass exactly by one other golden eye at the exact chime of the hour. And at that moment, they high five each other. What tang! And that's the chiming of the hour in beauty. Um, so, uh, chat, the next hour is going to come up uh, at, um, at 45 minutes uh, past the hour, whatever time zone you're watching in this. So, uh, 6.45 Pacific. Um, so, when that happens, you can all go, what tang! as that is the chiming <laughs> of the hour. Um, and that is going to be 8 p.m. And John is going to hang at 6 a.m. You've seen the gallows where he will hang. You have uh, 10 hours uh, in which to, uh, to, uh, to stop this. Uh, what tang? Um, all right. So... Uh, your questions were not answered by the judge. He is below such things. He is leaving the courtroom. But Bailiff Prendergast is coming forwards. Uh, um, um, I, I believe you're asking about the execution. Uh, it, will, it will be a hanging. Uh, the, the, the gallows is finely calibrated. Uh, and we do our best that it's a very clean death. And, of course, uh, John also is being led away uh, by uh, two golden eyes. He's going to the jail, which is, is part of the courthouse. And he looks back and says, it was not your fault. It is not your fault. I'm Do aware. not worry. Uh, so, uh, and in fact, he, he, he turns as he's going out and says, let it go. Do not do anything that will place you at risk. Uh, so out goes John, the, uh, the orc um, uh, uh, liqueur salesman, uh, to his cell. Um, and there's Bailiff Prendergast. Uh, I, I need to go to my office. Would you like to come for a sherry? And you can ask me any other questions. I, I would very much like to come for a sherry. That, that I mean, that, yep. is, that, very, very well. is that gratis? That's a, that's a sort of a city service that you offer? Or a, that's a friendly invitation? Well, well, I, I think it is the least we can do, given the distressing circumstances of the imminent uh, death of your, uh, con your, your colleague. So, uh, well, please. We, we keep saying death. Can't, can't we pay the fine? No, oh, you're yes, talking about Crumpet. Can. So, um, uh, yeah, Crumpet. Prendergast uh, is is picking up all of his law books, and it's a bit of a stagger for the guy. You know, he's, he's kind of an old fellow with very kind of heavy ceremonial robes with kind of ermine. Can I help? Of course you can. 
All right. Uh, 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 and he's like watching these books rise into the heavens. Oh, oh, oh thank you. Oh, 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 thank you. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, this way. Um, and if you can is... figure out, if you have any idea how to polish one of these things, we've tried a number of different things. I'm not human myself, but <laughs> I'm gonna. I may ask you for a strange favor later. Just, just know. Oh, I, I, I it's I, not I, perverse I, in any way. Say uh, no. <laughs> So you uh, go out of along the corridors of the courthouse. Um, uh, just ahead, you can see moving into the jail is where the golden eyes, as their keys are winding away on their backs, as they take uh, John to his uh, his cell uh, to arrange his last meal. Um, and you go through to Prendergast's office. And once he opens that door, all that kind of um, notion of the polished wood and the gleaming brass is uh, of the courtroom is, is utterly dispelled. It's just a mess of filing cabinets and books and, and legal papers and documents kind of swirling. Um, you can barely get into the room. He's got a little kind of way in which he walks through it. Uh, but uh, that he can. Copper, you're going to have to make an agility or you're going to knock some things over as you make your way through. All right. All right. Uh, that is a 19 minus 2, so 17. That is, that is absolutely extraordinary. And the reason why you're doing so well in here is because um, unlike the Welcome Stranger, which is the pub where you're staying, where you arrived, which has the kind of low wooden beams, this is it's because it's an old stone building, so which has been built to impose upon the citizens of beauty uh, how justice and laws are, are seen in this town. So huge high ceilings. So you're, you're, you're making your way. It's, it's, it's a bit of a pleasure. Uh, you haven't dented your head today. So um, you managed to get through to his desk, uh, where he takes out the sherry decanter, he pours three glasses, there might be a moment where you're waiting for him to set it on fire, he does not, uh, and uh, actually he pours, a, he pours a glass for you as well, Copper. Uh, thank you for the sentiment. Well, well I, I did not wish for you to feel left out, and, and of course, um, as I've given it to you freely, then one of your one of your colleagues is, is very welcome. I, I, you know, I am happy to take that off of your hands, Copper. That it, it, it seems like it's a rust risk. I don't have eyes, but I maintain eye contact as I hand it to Licko. <laughs> yeah. Well. Oh. No, 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 that that is a really interesting decision there, Copper, because when we last played, you were a very straight-up clockwork, and Licko is a tiny, murdering, thieving kind of rogue, uh, whereas mm -hmm. Orem is a very straight-up. So what has happened in this time that you're favouring the tiny murderer and not the bearded, benevolent, and wise alcoholic priest? Well, first of all, it's, I'm not the same robot rube i used to be okay right. i'm a much more nuanced adult uh clockwork with a hat okay you've, i have a witch you've hat. committed you've, you've committed far more murders in the intermediate time <laughs> i've committed a lot of murders that is true but so also, many murders Orm keeps trying to have things pee on me and at a certain point <laughs> even though i'm incapable of feeling things it's gotten to the point where it's like okay uh, i'm gonna do this stuff out of spite I might, I might not have emotions. No, I know no, I, 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 I absolutely now understand, and I should have picked on that. Yes, the urine polish thing. He might have to let that go. Uh, all right. So uh, sherry that's, is served. That's Bailey's... not a way to get a guy to let something go. <laughs> <laughs> Bailiff uh, Prendergast settles himself down. Uh, now, uh, um, is there any other questions? Uh, well, well, first of all, I'd just like to reassure you um, that your your employer will be treated with all respect. He will be buried in our cemetery. We will place two silvers upon his eyes, as is the custom, to, to see him as the wheel turns and he is reincarnated. So he'll as be treated with all hand. due request, uh, due respect. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Um, is it possible for us to get that two silver now? Because we need six silver, we are a little short on all oh, oh, silver. Oh, not at all, copper. not at all. No, 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 no. The silver comes no. from uh, the, the town treasury, and it is dispersed for the purpose of funeral funerals. Ah. So uh, it, it would be theft if I was to give that to you. No, I can only give it to you, to him, when he is dead, because that is when he will need it. Uh, are, are we clear? 
I'd argue he needs it now, but I understand and we are clear. But but you don't understand. It's a disbursement. And and I cannot authorize that nor sign it out of my treasury uh, until such time. He, he absolutely doesn't get it. Like he's got this legal mind. He doesn't understand. Uh, oh, uh, I think there's a tiny green hand appearing above my desk. Uh, yes. Where? Left. Where is treasury? The where is the treasury? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, the treasury, of course, is uh, uh, well. I mean, I have I have funds here uh, for the purpose, and uh, we have, of course, the bank, uh, the the beautiful bank, um, and so you'll find that uh, the town is very well, very well mm. uh, financed. Uh, are you looking to open a savings or a deposit? Are you yes. Looking to make an investment. Lico wants to open accounts. Right. Certainly. Um, I. Sure. I understand that this is a very stressful time for you, and I would really hate, uh, it, would, it would cause me great distress to find myself arranging for your execution tomorrow on the grounds of theft from the treasury. I, I hope an account legally. Ha! I, I hope you don't take offence. I, I didn't mean to cause offence, merely just, just some advice. So rude. So rude. Uh, I'm sorry. Please have another sherry. So that's three sherries for Lico. Oh, my God. And sherry is such a sweet, <laughs> it's a oh. uh, and it's not a good sherry. So uh, yeah, so liquor is flying. Taste good liquor. Uh, no, is there? Is are there you else? are you certain that you can can't um, uh, uh, give us these two silver pieces? You need to understand something. I'm a man of faith, and I don't know if your well, let me straight up ask, are you familiar with orcish burial ceremonies? Uh, no, I am not, and I regret that we cannot uh, return <laughs> okay. him. Okay, oh. all right. Well, I, I happen to be familiar with those, and one of the key things that happens is that any time an orcish body is to be interred for eternity, any of its uh, accompanying possessions that are going to journey with it into the afterlife uh, have to be blessed at least 24 hours in advance. So if you were to bury him with these two silver pieces, you would actually be disrespecting Orcish tradition and, in their faith, cursing his body to an eternity of hellfire and doom. <laughs> what uh, an outrageous line of, of bullshit that you just made up. And let us see uh, if, no. if you succeed with a will check against his intellect to convince him of this lie. Um, I this. And he has uh, an intellect of 12. So that is your challenge rating to persuade him that this mm -hmm. is. Because he said very clearly he legally can't give you the money, but you are appealing to him. So how'd you go? You've got to beat 12 using your will. So so can I use my my prayer, my triggered action to give myself a boon? It says here that I can give a boon to You another. can, but you would be praying to the dwarf ancestors to follow up on your lie to save an orc. Is that seriously something you want to ask grandfather, great grandfather, great great grandfather, great 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 grandfather? Because you know they're going to have words about it. Because none of you realize this, but they're all in the room. Whenever Oren walks around, there's like 10 or 12 dwarves that only he can perceive judging you every minute of the day. So are you going to pray to them to help you with this? No reason, just asking. <laughs> <clears throat> no, I'm just going to let the dice, dice fall where they may. All right. Remember, it's September. If anyone wants to subscribe to Save and Throw Show, you could give Tom a boon. And there is one here for the taking. How'd your roll go? Uh, I got 15 plus one is 16. Oh, well, well I, 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 under the circumstances, very well. Um, I, I, am, I will give you the two silver. Um, and I, I will need you to uh, bring these uh, to the, um, uh, where when he is, um, when he is removed and prepared for burial, and, and we will we will only use the ones that you return, and of course uh, you will return these in the event that he is not hanged and you paid the fine. Yes, I promise to bring these back to court. Right. Well, very well. All right. So uh, into your treasure chest, two silver, which now contains two silver and five copper. Oh, presuming Lico wants to share the five copper that he stole during the uh, the arson. Maybe he doesn't. 
No, he's not. He contains two silver, and that's all. All right. All right. So we kind of need to go find a uh, way to make some money fast. Now, uh, uh, chat, uh, we might have missed the whatang. Oh, we did. 8 p.m. past at 45. The next minute will be on the hour. Then it's going to be 9 o'clock. Uh, the night is getting away from you. Mm. Is there anything else I, I, I can help you with? Oh, oh, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Mr. Lico. Uh, may I please have back that handkerchief? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it is a snot ball of just, you know, a goblin saliva and other yeah. liquids. Okay, so he, he takes out a pair of white cotton gloves. And um, he uh, heads behind him where he's got a series of, of glass vials with corks on them. And you can see that one of them is kind of full of a clear liquid and the other one is about half full. Uh, and he takes the handkerchief and then he gets a strainer to catch all the, the chunky bits. And he wrings the handkerchief out and strains the liquid into the vial. And then he throws it in the laundry basket and uh, stoppers it up. Uh, thank you very much. Gnarly. Do you know, Gnarly. have any of these vials ever been used to like polish silverware or clean oh, oh, yeah, pipes? You or... Sorry, or, sorry. Um... You, mean, you, you asked for that. Yes, I have some metal polish. I have lots of it. Um, so he gives you like a metal polishing uh, cloth. And um, I mean, all of the metal fittings, the Bale of Prendergast does everything. So everything in the courtroom that gleams and shines, possibly even the judge's gold buttons on his coat, uh, they are all polished by Prendergast. So uh, yeah, he's got metal polish. He, he freely gives you a, a small can of the stuff. Oh, thank you very much. I very much appreciate that. I'm just going to tuck that right here in my robe in my pocket. You're welcome. Well, I, I, I guess you uh, probably... Um, is there anything else I can tell you? Uh, do, you know, we'd like to raise some money to try and free our, our compatriot. Do you feel like that's just impossible, or do you know anybody around here who hires people for odd jobs? We're certainly an odd crew. Uh, uh, well, um, you see, for for a job interview, um, normally uh, uh, advertisements are placed in the in the in the uh, in the broadsheet, and uh, I'm sure you could probably get an interview by next um, uh, sonnet day. And uh, I, I think you could possibly, given your skills, uh, get some um, store, storeman and packing work by next week, easily. Yeah, I think uh, we're just going to drink our sorrows away. Can you point us at the nearest, uh, rowdiest, most unsavory pub? Mm -hmm. oh, well, yeah. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend uh, such places, but uh, uh, it, it, I understand, of course, that, that people have uh, different uh, preferences. Um, now, now, nothing uh, unsalubrious or, or, or where crimes have been known to be committed. Um, I should think that any of the uh, uh, inns and establishments near the, uh, the, the farmer's market would be would be um, would be the the kind of um, atmosphere and um, that you are searching for. Farmers are certainly notorious liars and debaucherers. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, certainly uh, some of them have been. Uh, they're, 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 you will notice, in fact, you could probably get a job in the market because of the food shortages. There's been an increased call for security in the market, and there have been some. Um, you know, of course, that all of the uh, all of the the householders uh, will be at the market at dawn. Uh, in, in fact, it's really cut into our um, uh, crowds at the executions uh, that they will be uh, uh, at the market at dawn in in order to get the, the first of the produce. And there 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 have been some stabbings. Uh, really, um, uh, the cooks are um, we well, you know they have knives, so uh, you could probably get a job there at dawn just to keep them the peace. So when you say householders, you mean like house servants and whatnot. There's, there's, there's cooks and, and chefs and 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 uh, and, and busboys and, uh, and 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 serving serving people. Uh, yes, yes, quite. Well, what? And the execution is at what time? At six a.m. 
Oh, I can see that wouldn't. What time work. is dawn again? The sun rises. <laughs> the sun rises at three here. Does it not? I, no, no, I no, recognize no, this strange Icelandic uh, landscape uh, from my various travels. Uh, oh, you you must have travelled some distance. No, no, six a.m. is in fact. The, the the market opens at the same time as the execution. So, right. Uh, Why don't you just have the executions in the market? Uh, that way you can kind of <laughs> kill two birds with one stone. Oh, I think that would be way too distressing. There, there are children who shop there. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know where you're from, but that doesn't sound very savory. I mean, they need um, to learn the reality anyway, of the world uh, like anyone else. I, I, I believe I've helped you as much as I can, and I really should should get onto this filing. Um, and <laughs> you know, it's like papers fluttering here and there. Uh, I, I guess I could probably do Q1. Uh, yes, another late night for me. All right. All right, so he's lighting a long candle. All right. <laughs> In his uh, tinderbox house. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I, will I, I will see you at the execution. Uh, uh, yep. Yes, yep. you will. Mm -hmm. or, or, of course, if you, if you um, uh, manage to uh, raise the fine uh, by, by legal and, 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 uh, and correct methods, uh, then, then bring it to the, to the, um, to, to the execution. Um, I would recommend uh, producing it before uh, I pull the lever just to the left of the gallows tree. If you pay it after, then that would be too late. We want to make sure sense. he's alive when we hand you the money. So you don't Quite. kill him. Yes? Yes, yes. I, th I okay. think that would be to your Great. Your we are job. on the same page, mm -hmm. I'm happy to say. And and then uh, I would really recommend that you uh, leave town uh, swiftly uh, because the burning of the grain has, has not been popular mm. at all. And in fact, um, I, I'm afraid that there was an instance where your cart was dismantled and all of the alcohol smashed uh, because um, people were displeased and uh, the golden eyes uh, did their best and and uh, and uh, but we couldn't save anything so uh, sorry about that can I just ask a quick quick question about these golden eyes how do you how do you get so many clockwork autonomous people to work for the city oh well, we don't we, really we, have a choice usually oh no no they are they are constructed uh, by the artificers and and uh, well, it was a as a recommendation of the judge uh, when he uh, was appointed to the position um, that uh, if we wished the town to be orderly, um, then we should have a, a a clockwork force that can be relied upon, and, and things have been much better. That in combination with, of course, the the strict um, uh, sentencing and fines that he's instituted. Um, can I just ask, like, who's in charge before the? judge well the the old judge um and uh, uh so uh yes so so when they, they when they died um then we we had to appoint someone and we chose um uh, the judge uh because he was a surgeon of, of great skill and care and 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 really um the other thing we have is is really good health care now uh so that there's a, we're very very healthy and well ordered town now so yeah what did the old judge die of uh oh um well uh he um uh he had a heart attack and how long has this new judge been in town then oh so let, let me see uh he started um six years six months and six days ago kind of a current motif i'm noticing uh so um yes well, uh, anyway, it's just about um, nine o'clock, uh, and um, I, I'm a bit worried about your your goblin associate there. I think you may need to um, uh, get some mm -hmm. um, form of uh, uh, caffeinated um, drink into him. Uh, oh, like, um, yeah, we should go to someplace unsavory. That's the only kind of drinks that goblins like. If you give them that's something true. too good, then they get kind of off kilter. <laughs> I get a full head and... No one wants that. You ever seen a goblin with a full head of hair? It's disturbing. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, well, uh, I, I think I think goblins are allowed to their own sartorial choices, and it is not for me to say what is disturbing. Uh, all are welcome in beauty, and all are beautiful in beauty. That is our motto. 
um, unless you break the law, in which case you'll be hanged. Uh, so uh, thank you very much. I really need to get back to work. Uh, there's so much here to do. Uh, good luck. Yeah, you got this whole candle to burn. So I pick up Licko and I take my leaf. Okay. All right. So uh, filing your way back through another agility roll from you there, Copper, not to knock over a stack of... Uh, that would be a nine, so that's a fail. Oh, it's and it's oh. not you. It's the hanging goblin, you know, <laughs> like with his, his arms hanging. He, you just accidentally swipe him through a, a perfectly alphabetized stack of pile. The, the, mm. the stuff he's about to file, like the cues, you know, one through subsection mm. 13, and show boom, down they go, whoosh. And no Prendergast no goes, ah. Uh, well, uh, th that was my fault. I, I should I should not have offered I uh, should not have allowed him to drink the sherry's. Uh, th that is on me. Um, I I better get another candle. I guess it's going to be a long night. Uh, but as the Watangs are filing out on chat, as Watang, you can hear those high fives in the town ringing. As those another hour has passed somehow. Um, uh it's now because we're running this we're running this sucker in real time so real time is game time is real time so it's now nine o'clock in the game world so uh clock is ticking your boss is gonna hang in one hour 45 uh of the real world so what are you gonna do you're leaving you step out um and you can see uh that you can either go back to the main road following on the courthouse or if you walk the other way that will take you past the jail so what's plan? Well, we first we're going to go by the oh, jail. Oh, sorry. I, I forgot something, which is quite important. Oh. When you pick up Lico, he starts to scream because you're made of iron. And <gasps> he <laughs> is a fey creature. Oh, and that's right. what sobers him up. It's like you've tased him all the way out the door. So there is no wonder he was jittering and hollering and screeching and knocking papers everywhere. So, uh, Drop. Yeah. Yeah. So here so, I thought he was made of copper, but, you know. <laughs> I thought it was too. Uh, oh, so then am I? Then it's this. Maybe this is like a, some iron band in you. Just that metal oh. is bad for him, uh, like something in the joints. So yeah, he, or maybe he was just shrieking out of sheer fear. Um, so my my mistake. Anyway, he has a freak out. Doesn't like the metal. You're outside, uh, and the town of beauty <laughs> with the uh, with the low fog and the high gambrelled roofs and the spires. And even as you look, there's as one of the golden eyes. Its head just pivoting 360 and a slow turn around. Um, the light from the street lamps glimping off its shining eyes. I want to get into. Uh... Orem's ear. How, how much do you think we can get for one of them? And he points to one of the golden eyes. I, I mean, my question is, how far do you think we can ride one of those things? Oh. Do you think it, we need one each, or do you think we can both ride one? Me and you are good. Copper, he needs his own. I feel if if Copper's going to ride one of those things, that's something he's got to work out with a golden eye on his own. Consent is important, yes. <laughs> uh, I, I, I feel like... That, like Copper, do you think these golden eyes are fully sentient like yourself, or do you feel like there's some sort of just kind of empty, hollow kind of intelligence behind these things? Like yourself. Oh. Mm -hmm. Um, I, that, I would like to point I, out for I, the record. I can, I can answer that. They are absolutely sentient. You've you've talked to them. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, I know. As in Copper has, you know. Just, oh, we had lovely uh, conversations. We've talked about uh, retirement plans. We've talked about four hundred one ks. We talked about health insurance benefits. You know, they have a real. The language of clockworks. It's just totally weird. You know, it comes mm -hmm. sent you these things. Um, also, uh, something that I, I forgot. Shame on me. Of course, is you also haven't seen Amica. Uh, since the fire. Uh, and Amica has been a strange, uh, still dedicated to you and, and your colleagues because she knows the fight you're engaged in is just and that the murdering is justified. But, you know, ever since you got the pools of darkness, ever since you had that day in the forest, you haven't seen her since the fire either. 
So, yeah, so Amic is missing, Mr. Crumpet is missing. Um, all of your stuff is at the Welcome Stranger, the inn where you, you're not kind of all fully kitted up with everything right now. Uh, it's back in the pub that you stayed at because you really hadn't expected. Uh, actually, that's unfair. I'm sorry. You are, you are bodyguards. Of course you have all your stuff with you. Uh, but all your other possessions, like your road possessions, are back at the, uh, the Welcome Stranger. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, uh, there it is. You've exited the courthouse. Uh, you've exited the bailiff's office. There is the courthouse to your left. There's the jail to the right. Uh, and you know if you get out into the main street, you'll be out in the town. Uh, and the, uh, the farmer's market is uh, quite near your pub that lies over on the, uh, the north side of town. So my question is, are we going to be stealing money or are we going to try to do something under the table to get the money? Well, Steal it's... it from under the table. I like it. It's, it's 9 p.m. now, and we have until 6 a.m. to raise this, these funds. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what kind of legitimate work happens between 9 p.m. and 6 a.m., but if you would like to bake some bread or slop out the stables, I guess. Uh, I don't know that anybody's going to pay six gold to get those things done. Well, I was thinking more along the lines of be paid by someone to murder someone else under the table. Murdering under a table is hard. You have to get them under there is tricky. Yeah, That is a very good point. Would you just punch through the top of the table? Because it's going to be, you know, you're going to have to. My arm is a sword, so it would be kind of like kashunk. 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 I'm not sure freelance murderer for hire is really the high road here for a guy who seems to be more than willing to be executed in the morning, to be quite honest. <clears throat> well, um, I do feel responsible for ruining his livelihood and, uh, everything else. It wasn't my idea to put the incredibly flammable stuff underneath the awning, but uh, I was involved. Here's here's my position on this as a man of faith and morals, which is... Not a man. This, this law seems inherently unjust, and therefore fulfilling it seems like propagating the values of the system. Uh, it just means some other innocent person is going to end up getting hanged tomorrow or the next day or the next day. I think this judge is the one that needs some murdering. If we murder a judge, sentence can't be carried out. Makes sense. Yes. The sentence could be overturned by installing a new judge. Counterpoint, we break him out of jail and leave. Yeah, that's also an option. Counter, counterpoint. We get drunk. <laughs> I can't get drunk. I'm a robot. We get drunk. I point to Warren. Get drunk. He can't get drunk. He's an alcoholic. I get drunk. Counter, You're counter, counterpoint. Drunk. There's no reason we can't do any and all of these things while completely drunk. So I guess Copper, I'm the token need, sober friend for this. You trip. need to learn how to speak goblin, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so um, as far as I can see, you basically just got out of the bailiff's office and had this huge conversation. Mm -hmm. And finally you hear a voice call from the grail, uh, from the from the jail. Who <laughs> uh, friend, wisely. Friends, please do not murder anybody on my behalf. Please live your lives. It is... It is a fair sentence. I, I'm prepared for it. Bodhi, so, uh, Bodhi, is that you? Yeah, absolutely. You know the voice of John <laughs> slash Gargak slash Bodhi. Uh, yeah, he's like literally been here in all this discussion uh, because the jail is right there. There are iron bars, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, uh, Bodhi, I wanted to ask you something. Is it okay if you just straight up get executed tomorrow and we don't actually bother to go and collect all this money? When we've got two silver and five... Copper, that's more no, than you, you have paid us silver. the entire time that we've worked for you. All right, so, so you all uh, gravitate to the window at which he's speaking. Um, now, uh, 
because of your angle, Aurum and Lico being dwarf and goblin, you're kind of looking up to the bars. All you can see is the gloom of the ceiling. Uh, Copper, because you're very tall, uh, if you squidge down a bit, you can see he's not standing at the bars like holding them. He's actually just seated on a wooden bench with a bit of straw. He looks quite resigned. Uh, on the other side of the cell. Um, there's a big iron door to the cell, and you can see there's a golden eye uh, passes outside, and uh, as it does so, one comes the other direction. Bang, bang, bang. So, uh, they don't have five, though. They don't, because uh, as chat will tell you, if you are paying attention, Stephen, yeah. uh, it is uh, it is ten past the hour, not a quarter past. Uh, so, no, they do not high-five. Um, clearly, they have a different routine because they're just patrolling in close proximity. Um, the high-fiving is when they are doing their big circuitous routes around the town. Um, but there is uh, John, uh, and uh, he... he uh, I, I feel that... The granary burns through the direct actions of mine in setting up my stand there. It, it is, if you can raise the money, that would be good, but I am standing committed of a crime and I would hate for us all to be on the gallows together. You have been very good to me. I have done my best for you. And if you can raise the money, I would appreciate it if there is something you can do. But um, I, 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 I've seen, this is why I rescued you when I found you on the road. You had the air of desperate people who would do desperate things until you died and that death would come for you. And I've done my best to save you from that fate and irony that, and even the word irony makes you go, ugh, Lico. Uh, <laughs> irony means that uh, in fact, I am the one. You need to live for me. Uh, so uh, be well, friends. Do not worry about an old orc bootlegger. Before... Uh, and it's really we... funny he describes himself as an old orc, because he's not. He's like, I don't know, you know, 28 in orc years. But he's looking really kind of bowed down, you know, really. He really does seem to have aged quite a lot uh, since the sentence was passed. I just have a very quick question for you, my fine orc friend. In your years and years, as you are so old, uh, I can't tell all you organics look the same to me. Um, have you ever had a drink go that sky high before? Well, well yes. I mean, he's a, he's a flaming jet, and uh, we, we were simply unlucky. Uh, I, I do not think that there was, oh, you think maybe, well, sometimes there is some variation in the distilling process and some drinks are more flammable than others. So it, it may simply have been an, an older vintage. I should have thought of that. Of course, it was the old kegs. I, I see what you were saying. Has, has, uh, do I have an enemy? Have they tampered with the drinks? Well, I, I do. Bingo. Uh, maybe, but if so, then they are far away from here, and it's almost impossible uh, to, uh, to 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 prove anything in the short term. But uh, if you're looking to avenge me, then don't. Everything I've been doing is to say that we, in these times, we need to drink and be happy together. Blood begets blood. It ends in a rope. Leave me. Leave me goodbye, my friends. We have talked too long. And indeed, you have talked quite a while. For some reason, the hour has been passing and uh, the night is going along. Bodhi, I just have one final question before we depart here. If you truly believe that this is a uh, sure and swift execution of justice and that you are deeply guilty and uh, deserve the fate that awaits you in the morning, uh, blink twice, but if you would like to go on, enjoy living your life and uh, free from the oppression of these clockwork uh, automatons, uh, blink once. Of course, of course, I wish. I wish ah, two do. blinks it is, I see, very good. Well, <laughs> you are certainly the most lawful of orcs that I have ever encountered in my long and storied career. Of Indeed, adventure. the most lawful. Mm. And I'm gonna try to pull uh, the bars off. Um, 
certainly you kind of step up to the bars, but you know that's going to make a huge noise and there are two clockworks outside and there'll be another clockwork within earshot. So you can do this for sure, but um, it's, it's, it's not a particularly considered plan, if I may say so, but hey, you do you, copper. You step up and grab hold of the bars and I will allow uh, before I do, before I do, to see what's right going before to I do, happen. Right before I do, I look to Orm, I look to Licko, Thumbs up, thumbs down. How we feel about this? Before you reach for the iron bars to just rip no, them. No, I already have the them. I have it in my hand. I'm just like, pull them. No, yes. Oh, I can't give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down because I'm currently looking for escape routes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for things to lick, so I'm not entirely sure. Like you, you do that, and I be- immediately uh, assume a defensive crouch to try and start running away. <laughs> Well, yeah, screw it. Do the dumb thing. It's a one shot. Yes, I pull. C- certainly, it's not certainly, a one shot. Certainly, uh, John, not. John, John will see this, and he's like, "Do, do not, copper, no, 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 no." You're positive. Yeah, well, it is a crime to break me out of jail. This will guarantee yes. we all hang. You will accomplish nothing. Well, we I can't are, hang. Uh, so, um, <laughs> argument, counterpoint, counterpoint. Counterpoint, my fine orc friend. What tang? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. There it is. There goes chat. They're on it. Uh, we've got some wapangs and some watangs. So we've got some different styles there. Uh, and uh, oh, a sneaky one in there from a player. So <laughs> oh, and the bell icon and a wu tang. This is fantastic. Thank you, chat. So uh, that's ringing out everywhere as you've been uh, comforting him. It's now ten o'clock. Okay, all right, all right. But, you know, if it gets around 5 a.m., I might just come back, all right? Just keep that in mind. All right. Okay, and when you're when you at the bars, he kind of came towards the bars almost like, you know, to grab them from the other side, and then he kind of flinches away. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no, don't, don't do it. All right. Okay, gentlemen, what are we going to do? All right. Well, let's go to the nearest constabula or uh, pub establishment and see what the locals feel about this whole situation. Because I, I am convinced that this judge, this judge is uh, crooked and tyrannical, and I think that bailiff uh, Prender, Pendergrast may be uh, merely tolerating or doing his official duties when the the community may be served with a change in the judiciary so the nearest pub is in the courthouse now uh, the courthouse is often in the kind of the civic district so the pubs here are probably you know frequented by um um guild masters and maybe lawyers and uh and bankers so it, the, the nearest pub is like you know opposite you you can see it has kind of gilded fittings um and uh it looks like a pretty pretty uh well uh well appointed establishment we had talked about going into the near the farmers market district though so i think we should go to a yeah. pub in that area great okay so you're you're heading away from that um that pub by the way is called the um the golden harp um so you step away from that and now you're heading down a kind of cobbled street uh clattering away except maybe Lico. he tends to walk fairly quietly um <laughs> although copper g'dang, g'dang, g'dang. um and uh as you you head down there you can all make perception rolls all right how does that work again i have an 11. Have uh, so uh that mm. uh Essentially, 10 is the baseline that you're aiming for. So if you've got 11, you get to add one. If you've got nine, you have to subtract one from your dice. Got it. Okay, so Lico succeeded. And can I... Is it, This isn't a triggered action, so I can't pray to add a boon to this, right? Uh, again, it's about probably... Um, it's an interesting question. Uh, if you really, like, I think if you're desperate, you're literally praying to the dwarf ancestors to help your friend. I, I can feel your desperation. So sure, throw, have a prayer. Like, guide me, granddad. Guide me to the best pub. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I mean, grand, <laughs> gr- granddad yeah. already approves. You're like, Look, where's the best pub? How'd your roll go? So in this system, 
when you roll a natural <laughs> one, yep. what happens? Um, sometimes, even if you have a boon that gives you plus five and yeah. plus one from your intellect. So, Shadow of the Demon Lord doesn't bother with ones and twenties. It's success or fail. But if your adjusted roll is ever zero or less, that's quite bad. And in the case of Copper, if he ever gets zero or less for a challenge, he literally winds down. Like his key winds down and he stops. Um, whereas if your adjusted roll is 20 or greater, like some of you do more damage uh, or you get to recharge a spell. So the answer is a one is just a miss. And the reason is because when you pray to the ancestors, uh, not until you recite the deeds of uh, Afar. And it's like this mad history test. Like Afar, oh my god, that Afar, guy. right. Uh, Afar was a friend to the orcs. He helped many orcish um, merchants and salespeople uh, get out of many different um, legal conundrums that he found himself in in, but not without the help of uh, some wrong. powerful... Truth yes. is truth. Our tales are our annals. They are not to be rewritten. You're getting a lecture from ten... Dead dwarfs. It's quite time consuming. I uh, had the rest of it's you my go. Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you other two make your perception rolls? I got an 18, so I Papa passed. And Lico? Lico, you got yours? Okay, great. Um, so, uh, so while poor Aurum is 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 really uh, kind of getting it uh, in in both ears, um, uh, each of you noticed something different. Um, copper, because you've you've you know you're quite high, you can see that there is literally a, a poster on the wall with very nice writing, and it says "Adventurers Wanted." Um, please see Gilderoy Swallowtooth at the Golden Harp. Pluck. Um, and Lico, because you're lower and you're always kind of looking for the escape routes and the angles, you are looking into an alley. And in that alley, just away from the street light, kind of in the shadows, there is a tall figure in a stovepipe hat. And the figure has actually making eye contact with all of you, but Aurum is too stupid to notice, or sorry, too preoccupied, and uh, Copper is looking the other way. Uh, and the figure is gesturing to you, Lico. I reach out and I grab onto Orem. I I'm accidentally grabbing onto his beard and tugging okay. on it to get his attention. Ow, 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 ow. grandfather, All grandfather. Right. The lectures are enough, but you don't have to tug on my beard. Oh, uh, and yeah. you're back in the room or oh, back in the street. <laughs> okay, as as Copper is on the other side, unfurling this uh, this poster. Uh, I, I, I apologize to my ancestors for twisting the truth. I understand the curse which you have bestowed upon me now, and for one day I shall redeem myself. No, you won't. We both know that. Ancestors, <laughs> not ancestors. All right. I understand the curse that you have twice bestowed upon me, and I hope to one day redeem myself. So you, you are steered by the beard and pulled around, <laughs> and you can see that indeed there is a... a a, a figure uh, in dark clothing with a stovepipe hat and has been gesturing to Lico. And when you look, gets out the other finger to gesture to you as well. <laughs> I don't have kidneys. <laughs> I was not addressing you, Clockwork. I could get you kidneys, yes. Back. You may move on. So wait a minute. Which organ is it again that processes alcohol? Is it, is it the kidneys or the liver? It's the brain. So if you took the kidneys out of the equation, would the alcohol just keep circulating around and around, or...? You would die. You stay drunk forever. Okay, but in between the time when they took them out and then you actually perished... Alcohol is processed through the liver. It is possible to deliver fulfilling life with one kidney. Please, this way, if you are selling... How much for a liver, then? A liver. One gold. Oh. Uh, uh, oh. Oh, wait. So it's silver for. Oh, your liver. Time. Your liver. One copper. It's it's stronger. Much more exercise. Yeah, this is a premium, premium <laughs> liver. I can guarantee you, you will not find another liver like mine. The capillary oh. in your nose tells me everything I need to know about the state of your liver. But okay, I will that... still buy the kidney as offered. 
that's just rude is what that is. I don't know. I'm a surgeon. I'm not in the business of rudeness. I'm in the business of diagnosis. You're a I surgeon. Guess. You Surgeon by night, judge by day. No, just a doctor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are you selling or not? My colleagues are waiting. The theatre stands ready. And he's gesturing behind him in the alley, and a door opens, and another figure with a tall hat and a buttoned-up coat uh, is standing there. And he seems to be holding a, um, uh, a parchment. We have disclaimers to sign that you will sell these things to us legally and fairly. I get real close into Orem's ears, like my tongue is is in there. We could get six people, and that six gold, and the six silver, right? If if they are planning to pay people, then they must have money. I'd also oh. like to point out this is definitely immoral and more than likely illegal. So let's kill it. It is guys. neither. Here is the disclaimer. If you sign the rights, we will pay you fairly. We operate legally in this town. You may see our certificates of practice within the surgery. <laughs> no crimes are committed in beauty. We have offered <laughs> you a fair price for your organs. Are you selling or not? Oh, you want our organs? Oh, oh. Of course, if you were to bring me someone's organs without their consent, that would be a crime, and we are not in the business of crimes. Of course, of course, of course. We are in the business of harvesting. Hmm. I don't like how you said that word. Which word? Business. Harvesting. Yes, that is our business. Harvesting. Yeah, nope. Uh, I cannot physically feel things, but that gave me the heebie-jeebies. Well, boys, I say we get the fuck out of here. Bye. Uh, uh, I'm uh, willing uh, to increase the price. Three how much? Three silver kidney. One each. I mean, we got we got two kidneys right here if you really feel up for it, but... uh, How long does this procedure typically take? <laughs> You will wake from the anesthetic safely. It is up to your own body as to the recovery time. I have a lot to do between now and pretty soon. We so. are very skilled. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Please, three silvers each. Step into the surgery. I'm good. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Tell you what, you make it four silvers, you can have one of my kidneys. <laughs> Deal. Deal. Um, oh, however, I, I must demand that my friends supervise to us to make sure that you only take one, because if I wake up with none of them, uh, well, I'm going to go drinking right away, but I want them to get, uh, execute ret retribution. <laughs> They are welcome to the surgery. If they have the stomach for it, we'll pay one gold for a stomach. I don't have a stomach, but uh, okay. I do not wish to be rude, but none of this conversation is intended to you, sir. You are not organic. Yeah, that's Don't why he's break. the perfect accomplice to come along with me and observe this entire thing. He has no vested interest, nor do you, in his bodily functions. He is welcome. Step in. Ah. Come on, gents. Let's uh, let's oblige these uh, uh, two very uh, moral, upright, and just citizens in the execution of their chosen livelihoods. All right. So, are you going down the alley and into the uh, into the surgery? Yes. All right. So you step in, and uh, it is very carefully cleaned. There's a strong smell of ammonia. There is a, a surgical table with channels to drain the blood away. Um, there are kind of bags of that seem to be of blood for transfusions. There are gleaming surgical instruments, uh, and it looks very orderly. Um, Welcome. This is magnificent. What? 
I believe, you know, it's my provenance to ask, what do you use to clean all of your tools here and keep them so shiny and... Trade secrets get on the table. Tra uh, okay. Well, and first... they, they, they uh, produce a, a step up for you? Uh, uh, I need at least some of my payment in advance, number one. Uh, number two, I have not signed off on any documents which were promised to make this entire uh, uh, operation my legitimate. God. The patient is correct. I have the documents here. Colleague, you are traveling too fast as usual. You'll be pleased to know, Dwarf, that his speed also applies to his skill with the knife. You may change behind that curtain. Here is the disclaimer. All right, so he's rifled through and he's got a, uh, a kidney contract for you and he has inked and initialed that he's going to pay you four silver for it. I love the kidney contract. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, I'm yeah, well, in fact, uh, Copper, you can make a perception roll for me. Oh, okay. Uh, that is an 11. Fantastic. There are also contracts for stomachs, livers, spleens, brains, you know, testicles, like everything in there. They'll, they'll buy the lot. Um, all right. So. Uh, I'm going to attempt to uh, enter into um, a long series of questions and potential objections about the legalese uh, in this contract. <laughs> so as to give my compatriots time to A, scope out the uh, operating theater for uh, advantageous um, either stashes of, of coin or whatnot, um, and or get themselves into an advantageous, advantageous position to uh, jump these two jackholes. Okay. Um, so, uh, Aurum is, you guys are now a bit of a tight unit. Uh, once Aurum starts that long winded thing, it's his clue to you to look around. I need so, you all um, to understand that you have to. You have to comprehend my medical history before you ever, before you take one of these kidneys in case there's a complication with one of the donors. Now, my great, 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 great grandfather, <laughs> Dora, <That's me. laughs> right. over here. Right. I don't know if you know this, but he was very susceptible to freckles and moles. Now, we don't know if that was an allergic reaction or uh, some sort of sunlight so, kind of thing. Orum, Orum is going into this, and the rest of you are looking around. Roll perception. Will do. 11 on the die. And they Nothing are the fully die. interested in it. They are taking notes. They have literally produced a ledger, and you can now see there's a huge wall of books, and each of them has a name upon the spine of all the... And you can see Prendergast. Clearly, he sold something here. Who knows what it was? Uh, but, you know, times are tough. Got to make ends weak. Okay, you've made your perception rolls. So everything seems to be really carefully organised. Um, you asked for their authority, and they produce a signed certificate from the judge of beauty, and they do have their doctor's certificate on the wall in a weird twisted and incredibly odd way it seems legit uh, now they have closed the heavy door they could begin to murder you if murdering is their game but that doesn't seem to be the game they are operating strictly within the law even though none of these contracts observe that the removal of both kidneys would kill you um, and you definitely saw a brain contract in there as well so um yeah maybe they're holding some things back but everything looks incredibly legal um so that's what you're seeing as you're looking around the place the door is really heavy and you can see there's really heavy curtains designed to muffle sound of anything that might occur in here uh Lico, as always looking for the money there is a locked strong box you can see and they look at it and you go yep yeah, that is a tough one i can see that that's one of those kind of triple tumbler situations um I could work on that eventually. Looks like it'd really take some bashing, uh, but they've, they've probably got a key for it. Um, so yeah, they seem to have money in here. They have the tools, they have the contracts. Those are all the things that you have observed with your looking around. So uh, at this point, I am going to uh, say, well, this all seems copacetic to me. Uh, thank you for answering my questions. And uh, I sign a fake name on the bottom of the contract and I begin taking off my robe and I go behind the, the, uh, um, the little curtain 
area or whatever it is, and actually fully disrobe. And as, as you go around there, uh, one of them says to the other, take a note, dwarves are modest. The other one says, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and so around behind the little curtain you go. Nice. Uh, so I fully disrobe, and then I come out, and I uh, hop up on the table and, uh, and uh, go, well, uh, you know, if, uh, if you're going to do some cutting, uh, now's the time. I, I, I'm willing to tough it out. You don't need to use any anesthetic on me. I'm curious how this whole thing works. <laughs> All righty. Um, now, you have endeavored to deceive them with your fake namery, and they have been carefully watching for that. So roll your will. Mm -hmm. No, roll your intellect. Oh, uh, yeah, no, your, your choice. Probably will. Probably will. Actually, what is your will? Uh, my will way. is 11, so it's plus one. Okay, so I'm, I, it's actually them trying to spot you. It's actually their role. So they've rolled a 10, which is a success, but their intellect is 10. Your will is 11, so you have deceived them. Okay. Uh, what name did you sign, by the way? Uh, I signed Mick Boatface. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, typical dwarven name. Uh, thank you, chat. Uh, so... Uh, you're up there. They're getting. Are we doing this? They're getting out the knives. Yeah, yeah. I, I want them to get out the knives and start like making a move toward me. They, they're doing and, all that. And then at the very last minute, when they go, uh, when when they do, I'm gonna up, utter my prayer of stone armor. Right. Okay. And uh, so... and I and I go. Good luck getting this one out. I hope you got some chisels in that tool case. All right, so uh, you mutter the prayer in Dwarvish and suddenly his flesh becomes stone and he is inert. There's a kind of a groaning of the floorboards as you become massively heavier as they're leaning in with their scalpels and like, what is going on? Uh, you guys have seen. Have you problems. guys have seen this twice. You've saw it happen in the uh, sprout field, and you saw it happen in the forest. You know that he's encased in armor, and you know what's going to happen next. What are you two going to do? Oh, I can't cut the. I so, cut the sorry, flesh. I made you guys fight. I, I don't no, no, mean to... it's fine. It's your <laughs> shunk. No, I mean. My Stabby yeah, stabby. So what, what's happening is you're getting out the knife hand, you're getting out the stabby stabby, and they're just going to work. They're like, this is an interesting challenge, colleague. Yes, indeed it is. His flesh is very hard. So they're actually just going to work. You know, they've got no idea you're behind them about to murder them. They are just, they must, it is good to have a challenge. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, so they're kind of trying to roll him over. And otherwise ignoring you two, as I believe the ticking sound is getting louder and louder as the stone is becoming heavier and heavier. Um, um, and you can hold this for one minute. Yes. Uh, is exactly how long it lasts. So you might have to do that in real time. Uh, chat, everyone start counting, uh, starting from 60. All right. So uh, what are you two doing? I was going to stab them, but they don't seem like they're going to do anything wrong. I this no, doesn't look like totally, real danger. Totally legal I'm and normal. I'm just going to steal the money and shove it into the empty. The, the bus money that I call is abs absolutely uh, locked into a strong box, which is chained to the to the desk, and the desk is into the wall. So it's not like the money is there to be stolen. Mm. Uh, you would have to use some strength to rip that out. Um, the count is at 45, counting down. What are you two doing? He's oh, in I'm the just going to hold on to the box. I'll rip it off when they crash through the floor. Um, it's clear, not like they're going to crash through the floor. Yeah. Oh, okay. um, it's just, you know, it's putting some strain on the floorboards. The, there's some kind of vibration. Do you recall, Stephen? Copper might recall uh, if Stephen doesn't. Copper might, uh, Stephen make, doesn't. Make uh, intellect rolls, please, Jamison and Stephen slash Copper and Licko. I got a two. I I go no. I go nothing. Fantastic. All right. So that's good. Uh, as it seems to be some kind of deep vibration and vibrating coming from a muffled dwarven prayer. What are you two going to do? Backstab. As they are both leaning in, Licko's going for the backstab. What about you, Copper? 
I guess I'll just get ready to stab. All right, you get ready to stab and bang! All of the stone explodes! <laughs> now stone I'm rips through the room. It does 10d6 damage, I believe, Tom, because you got it charged up for the full time. Yeah, 1d6 um, per round. Okay. Yeah, 1d6 per round. Lico, I'm going to give you uh, a, a bonus there because you're so low, the explosion is coming off at table height. So it's as you're getting ready to stab one of these things, it's all flying above your head. So you're fine down there. Copper, you are catching the full blast. How much damage? I oh, don't know. You tell me. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's agility. Agility challenge is half. Okay, make an agility challenge, Hop, uh, Copper. Oh, bother. Push up. Uh, that is going to be an 11. 11. Okay, so you made the roll, so you're going to take half damage. Fantastic. Three. 29 points. 29 points, so 14 points of damage for Copper as the Dwarf detonates and at the last minute they kind of, you know, maybe tumble as to what's uh, go about to occur. They are making their agility um, and one of them, uh, 29 you say. So, kaboom! Uh, both of them make their agility at the last minute as they're leaning in. Probably it's, I guess, when they point where they cut a chisel in and bang, you explode. You're now a naked dwarf on a slab. These guys are blasted back to the wall. Copper is blasted back to the wall. Um, they've each taken 14 points of damage. Uh, it has just shredded their coats. Underneath their coats, they are horrible. They're like walking pieces of different people. Um, ghastly figures wrapped in snug linen, bleeding from all the organs that they buy and stitch into themselves to keep their unholy life going. They show their sharp teeth. So, kabam! Bang. It is a new uh, you, uh, Copper. You're blasted backwards. Lico, you were stabbing, and that's a perfectly legal stab because you were stagging from below the table. So roll a stab on one of these guys. His defense is 12. So roll the dice, add your agility to it, make it tricky, give yourself a boon. You are currently muted, Jameson. But it was a really good mime show of you right? counting oh, yeah. plus. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It is 18 plus one with the boon, so it's That's uh, a hit. 19. All right, so you're going to do D3 for your knife plus uh, D6 because it's a uh, tricky strike. Okay. It's going to be four points of damage total. All right, how do you murder that guy who just got blown up? Uh, I start at the base of the spine, and I just kind of... <laughs> <laughs> all right so that's awful uh he kind of collapses over dead as this guy is kind of like he's just there with the sh with the chisel he hits you bang he's kind of all blasted and then he's like and stabs the chisel down to you he has exactly one hit point remaining uh what is your defense when you're nude that's going to be defense 10 what's your agility there uh my agility is minus one Okay. Um, unsurprisingly, uh, he has rolled. Um, I know he gets two boons because he's such a good surgeon, but I'm not going to give him those. He just got blown up. So he's rolled nine. Uh, and what was your defense? Sorry. Your agility is? My agility is nine, so it's minus one. Right, so he has managed to stab you with the chisel. Uh, he strikes down, sorry. Damage dice coming up. Um, and he does you for eight points. Uh, so clearly he was, I think the way it worked was this. He was about to hammer the chisel down. You exploded and somehow he survived and the chisel kept going. Bang. But he is reeling. He is not in a good way at all. Um, all right. Um, although, Copper, you didn't get killed either, and you were about to nope. stab him. So I've been unfair to Tom. You still get that stab in, because in Shadow of the Demon Lord, players go first. So make a strike. If you can bring the guy down, then that chisel hit of eight points of damage is going to go into the slab. All right. I get that. Okay. His defense is 12. 
All righty. I'm using a sword arm, so mm -hmm. this is... We are looking at a 23. All right! Bang! Your damage is... This is 2d6 plus 2, so let's see what I get. Big clockwork warrior gets d6 for being a warrior, d6 plus Nine. 2 for sword arm. All right, so literally as his arms get cut off, like like the, 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 the severed arms manage to drive the, the chisel down, but it just kind of flops over. So you don't take that hit, Tom, at all. Uh, you can uh, retcon that as bang, they get exploded and uh and murdered i believe the recon is i roll over put my hand out catch the chisel and get up <laughs> off the table and sit up, up on the table nice all right. all right all right but you have shredded copper like he's got bits of mica and stuff he's dented all over uh it's wiped off half of his painted face uh he's not looking real good it's too bad you're not a person why I'd Maybe be it's better he is. What? Well, I could heal you if you were a person. Well, I turn around and point to the giant key I have in my back. Just, just turn this around a couple times. It'll, it'll fix me up, right? Wait, that, that's it. You just, you just need to turn that key a few times, and everything's good. Yep. No, that's that's not strictly correct. Um, if no. he goes down, if his oh. key winds down, you can wind the key to get him up. But damage has to be fixed with a toolkit. Um, mm. And you do have a toolkit. Um, uh, I forgot to put it on your character sheet, but you're briefly rich. So it takes four hours to repair him, and it's an intellect challenge. That. We're not going to do that. <clears throat> no. It'll like I said, a, it's too bad you're not a person. <laughs> as a warrior, uh, you do have your catch your breath to recover your healing rate. So oh. you can do that. Okay, I'll do that. All right, so he's stealing himself, knocking some dents out, and you get back your healing rate, which is four points. All right. While he is doing that, I would like to beat Licko to the punch and search these gentlemen for a key of any kind, which might open a certain strong box. Absolutely. The one with the contracts has a key. <clears throat> hey, uh, hey, Licko. Yeah. You want to... Nope. Hey, copper. Yeah. <laughs> you want to use this key on that strong box and make sure Licko doesn't scoop everything into his pockets? Sounds like a plan. I'm going to put my clothes on. I'm going to put my clothes on unless you have any objection. Like, I don't know. This town seems, this is a town of beauty. So maybe it's okay if I just parade around here. Um, you know, just well, wearing. Put that away. There are children present. Well, Sorry, Licko. Technically, the beard kind of, you know, covers any modesty issues, but there yeah, might true. be some public nudity bylaws. You don't know. Mm. Uh, of course, beauty, well, that, that's something that might be a legal case to argue. Uh, so you op you take the key from the shredded corpse, uh, this kind of gross individual, um, and open up the strong box, which contains uh, six silvers and one gold and one copper. Well, that almost gets So there. they were ready to legally pay everything that they offered you. I want to make sure they're actually dead. I totally did. They were blown to pieces and then you stabbed them. Cool. Well, uh, I, I hope their hat wasn't destroyed because I'm but also, definitely wearing that hat. All right. So there is the money into the chest. Yay. So Yay. Uh, count, counting this now, you're now up to eight silver one gold and one copper. There's still five copper in Lico's pocket. As I think it is time, and there it is. They're on it in the chat. Wapang! Wapang! Uh, now so that... Here's my question. I said I wanted four gold for my kidney. We only no, found they... one gold? No, I don't believe they offered you for you, you, never could, you could have asked for it but uh, as the chat is my witness and you can scrub it back on youtube scrub I believe... it back because they agreed i said four 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 gold i don't recall uttering that and perhaps you misheard them mm. it was a one goal mm. offer 
Uh, so they don't oh, have maybe it was gold for on silver. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was for silver. Nice. Yeah, that's exactly you. You did ar argue them up to nice try, Lommel. Uh, you did argue them up to four <laughs> silver, but it turns out they had six silver on hand because they'd offered you six silver for two kidneys. So yeah. they had the money that they offered to pay. Yeah, now, Lico, now that you're saying, are these guys dead? You're not too sure if they were ever alive or if they were alive a long time ago. They had mm. these hideous kind of stitched together individuals just surgically remaking themselves again and again and again. Very weird and creepy and thoroughly dead. Best rid of them. I uh, have a question. Yeah. I go over to the bookshelf and I pull the book that has Pendergrass's name on it. Oh, certainly. With All right. Kidney. <laughs> uh, he sold his uh, teeth. Wow. And now that you think, yes, he did have very nice pearly white teeth. He must have false teeth. Mm -hmm. um, and he, he, he got a gold for them. Huh. They were doing gold for teeth. Hmm. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna keep that keep that ledger. Well, so that got us kind of there. It got me blown up. I found this poster for someone looking for adventurers. Maybe we can do that in about three hours. Can I just point out that if you just had a better memory, you wouldn't have been standing so close and you wouldn't have been in the blast radius? You haven't blown yourself up in at least a dog's age, okay? It's not my fault I forgot. It's kind of like how you forgot I, I'm like a world-renowned square dancing champion, okay? We don't remember things about each other that often. You don't even I, remember my birthday. Okay, but I have very publicly exploded in your presence, and you have not once invited me to square dance, so I don't feel like that is a Well, fair that's because you don't comparison. remember my birthday. <laughs> All right. So um, that were Pang. Now, there was a lot of ceremony, a lot of cleaning, a lot of uh, uh, getting you ready for that, and somehow time has got away from you. It seems to be 2 a.m. now. <laughs> Uh, oh, so the night is going along. Remember, every 15 minutes of real time is an hour of game time. This game will finish with the drop of the noose and dang at the mark of the next hour. So do you save John or not? What do you do? I say we go to the bar where that guy's looking for adventurers. Maybe we can get that done real fast. Yes, Sounds we good. can kill him too. Also an option. <laughs> All right, so the good news is even though you exploded a dwarf uh, and my, it's they had that place so soundproof because of all the screaming uh, that nobody knows it happened. So, and, and like, like the walls are just covered in bits of them. Like they were just blowing to pieces, really. They were just kind of staggering around. So, yeah, you just step out, close the door behind you, whoop, 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 and uh, walk on. Okay. Uh, and Pardon? Can I break the lock so no one can go in there? Uh, of course you can. Yeah, certainly. Cool. Yeah. Okay. And uh, as you were going uh, along, there is a, a farmer. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he's coming uh, down the alley uh, uh, with his husband. And, and they look kind of really, you know, oh, I guess we need to do this. All right, very well. Well, one from each of us should be fine. Uh, oh, have you been selling kidneys too? We, we thought we would. Uh, yeah. Office closed tonight. Uh, I don't know if you've heard, but there was a health inspection and they just got written up for like nine different violations. They are closed until further notice. It's sad, mm -hmm. really. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And this is crushing news to them because like their farm is failing. The crops have all failed. And they thought, well, if we could just get four silvers, you know, we might be able to afford. And you've just told them this thing they're hanging on to, hanging on to is no longer possible. It sucks to be oh. them. Oh, well, um, well, very well, I, I guess. It's it's all right. We've we've got through this before. We'll get through it again. Come on. Uh, let, let's go. Hey, 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 fellas, can I can I ask you a question? Yeah, yeah, what, sure. What, what was life like before the new judge moved to town here six years ago? Oh, it was, it was quite quite lawless, really. It was a bit of a dangerous place, and uh, it was mm. hard to make an honest living. But but now it's it's really the town's really well run, 
And uh, that's why we come here to, to sell our crops. And we've been doing really well, actually. But we've overinvested in new equipment and, uh, you know, some of those kind of harvesting clockworks. And uh, we've overextended ourselves at the Bank of Beautiful. And uh, nothing grew this year. And we had, we had absolutely, um, so it's, yeah, it's, a, anyway, that, you, you didn't come here to tell about me. You know, if you ask about the charge, yeah, he's doing what's a good the, job. What's the penalty under the law if you don't repay your debt to the bank? Oh, well, you don't want to default uh, to the bank of beautiful. That's, um, you know, they, they put you in debt as prison uh, and execute you in the morning. Hmm. Don't be so hard on yourself. I agreed to the loan too. We'll we've still got we've still got till the end of the year. Yeah, it'd be all right. It'd be all right. Anyway, um, oh well. <laughs> At least we get to keep our kidneys, eh? Yeah, mate. All right, so they're off. Uh when they're out of earshot. Uh I only have half a face right now, but I'm gonna look down to Orum. So we're uh we're robbing that bank, right? Burning it think- down. I think we got to go look for sure. We got to take a look at it. Yeah. Yeah, let's go burn down the bank. All right. So you uh, head back up. Uh, so the um, the note for the adventurers wanted was at the Golden Harp, which was the very uh, uh, establishment that was right there on the town square. And that's where the bank is as well. So you can go back up there. The Golden Harp uh, has a, a doorman uh, who looks at you with a particularly snooty expression, it must be said. Um, and there is the beautiful bank. Oh, my goodness, the columns, the statues, the mahogany doors with the heavy spikes, the iron-barred windows, the heavy stone, the distant of the bank clockworks patrolling inside. <clears throat> I mean, this is, uh, you know, case in a bank is not my area of specialty here, Licko, but I feel like you know, this may be a particularly apt application of your talents. <clears throat> Is there any weak point uh, that looks like maybe a window or skylight that looks like maybe we can slip through? If you um, have a perception roll. And of course, would... it can be a tricky perception roll. You can put a boon on it because that's your skill. Are you going to pray for him? Is that? I am certainly doing? going to pray to my ancestors here. Because to we need help to... a goblin? <laughs> All right. Yes. So you're getting two boons on this. Um, now, when you get two boons, you just take the best of the two. Right. Okay. You're looking for a 10. How'd you go? 21. So <laughs> right now, you're a novice path adventurer. Okay, so you are a rogue. When you get to level three, you'll be an expert path adventurer, which would make you a thief. When you get to level seven, you'll be a master path adventurer. That building looks impossible for a goblin who barely manages to steal pickpocket during a fire. Uh, (laughs) So you see no weak points. Perhaps there are, but it looks very solid. With the 21? Uh, uh, it does, it's success or fail. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, there's no, no, no actually, it's, No, there's not. Actually, if you're stabbing someone, that gives you a better result. The okay. 21 makes you even more certain. Uh, the question was, is there a weak point? The answer is no. Mm-hmm. This isn't going to work. I don't know. Kind of what I took away from that was we need to set a fire. You have All form right. in arson. It is a stone building. Yeah, it's stone. No fire. Mm. We need hostages. You can hear the harp music coming from inside the inn. <laughs> well, I'm going to go check the inn. You two figure out if we're going to burn this place. No, let's, I, I, can't, I can't leave you to go <sighs> interact socially with organic life forms. That hasn't worked out for any of us. Uh-uh. Stay for yourself. All right, come on. I believe I'm speaking for all of us based on our personal experiences and our travails together. We enter the Golden Harp. I hope they actually have a real Golden Harp in this place. Let's make this a lot easier. uh, They are looking looking at you, and the doorman says, uh, I I don't think so. um, May I recommend uh, you'll find some fine establishments near the farmer's market. Good day. You're going to let us in. Uh, 
I must assure you with all due respect that I will not. I lean over him. You're going to let us in. All right, you're intimidating him. So oh, yeah. uh, use your strength versus his will. Okay. And his uh, will will be 11. That is a 21 there, Chief. All right, so he's definitely looking up and going, I would like to let you in, but I would be fired and I would like to keep this job. But I have fairly clear instructions. I don't think you understand. We're guests of uh, what was what was the name on the sheet? And the rest. Uh, no. Gilderoy's Gilderoy's Fallowtooth. We're guests of Gilderoy's Fallowtooth. Oh, uh, 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 very well. Well, uh, how about as a compromise, I tell Mister Swallowtooth, and he will come out. Is that all right? Like, no, make no mistake, Copper, he is intimidated. He'll just be fired if you push past him. Come on, the guy to lose his job. That, that, I think that's more than reasonable. Um, very well. Uh, okay, so he turns and speaks to one of the staff, who then disappears. Uh, when the door opens, yes, there is a beautiful, gleaming golden harp. Uh, and it's making sweet, sweet music. <sighs> and there is a very kind of... Uh, um, uh, kind of well-heeled crowd or very nicely dressed. Uh, and out comes a, a young man in, in the sharpest purple. Uh, he looks, his, his cuffs are perfect. His goatee is on point. Um, and he has big brown eyes and the floppiest hair. Uh, hello, hello, I was told that you asked for me. Ah, are you adventurers? Indeed. Ah. Ah, <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. You're exactly, oh, oh, you are too perfect. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. Please let my guests in. All right, and the doorman is like, of course. <laughs> and so now you're allowed in. Um, and all the staff, it's like you've really just gone in there and dropped the hugest fart, uh, except for you, Copper, that's not physically possible. So everyone just decides to pretend you're not in here. Uh, but you are in here because you're guests of Gilderoy's Wallet. As I walk past the host desk, I make sure to pluck a mint out of the little bowl <laughs> on the top of the stool and then pop it in my mouth. All right, so you reach for that, and the host sees that coming, and it's going to be an agility contest as she attempts to put her hand over the mint bowl. No I lick her you. hand if she jumps. Oh, God. All right, how'd your agility go? She gets a 20! Yeah. <laughs> your agility is negative one. You lick her hand. Uh, when the goblin tongue approaches, she definitely <laughs> flinches back. She doesn't want that. Nobody wants that. And no you one. Your uh, no, <laughs> here's, I think the way that this plays out, because I rolled a natural one and my agility oh, is zero, no. is that the, oh, goblin, no. the goblin tongue comes out and I reach into ah. the bowl and I grab the goblin tongue. Ah. <laughs> but I, I realize I got to commit to the bit, so I just lead Licko in the room by his tongue. <laughs> all right. You can see quietly all the other guests are saying, they're summoning for the maitre d' the waiter to make a complaint. Uh, so, uh, all right, you go to Gilderoy's table. Ah, you're perfect. You're absolutely perfect. I can't believe how perfect you are. Look, I need you to do something for me. And what I need you to do is to be yourselves. Can you do that for me? Can you do that? Um, yes. Good, good, good. Look, Esmeralda Prang, the most divine, divine creature to ever walk upon the new God's green earth. She's talking to that cob spit. That cob spit. That, that, that ingrate, that clod. That, that, he does not speak high archaic. I think that says everything we need to know about cob spit. And My goodness. I think... That if you could promenade with me, just promenade is all you have to do, and be yourselves, then Esmeralda Prang will know that I am a bad, bad boy. Can you do that for me? Somehow, I think we'll manage. Ah, oh, excellent. I'll, I would definitely pay you a copper piece each. Mm. <laughs> All 
a room like this requires money. We know you have money. We, we need, need money. money. Lots of it. Oh, I thought that you were terrible people on the wrong side of the law that indulge in terrible crimes. That's why I hired you. I we might be. Desperate <laughs> desperados that haven't seen a coin or a clean bed. As a court to the novels I read, it's quite thrilling to be with you, I must say. Oh, well, you um, need to read to the end where we turn uh, on our uh, hirers because we are... Oh, I, I, don't, I don't read those ones. They are too grim and dark. I, I read the ones where the where the hero always makes friends and 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 the desperados realize the error of their ways. But however, I can see you have a point. So two coppers each. How's that? Yeah, mm. we're gonna need a gold each. And meanwhile, not, on the no chat, chance. there is a sound, and you Wa-pang. know what the sound is? Wapang. Mm. Wapang. Thank you, chat. You give good wapang. Um, and I want you, when we hit the top of the hour, just chat. I just want my phone to explode with all the bells and emojis and uppercase were pangs you can stand. Because according to that, it is now 3 a.m. There are three hours left, or 45 minutes in real time, to save your boss. What are you asking for? Gilderoy, the night is short. I don't need to tell you that. So if you want to improve your chances with Esmeralda in any way, shape, or form, you'll pay us each a gold. Mm. Two gold. All right. Now you have to um, all succeed in a challenge in that moment to be not your best selves, but the self he thinks he's hiring. You need to kind of describe the pose that says you're worth a gold each. All right. So you can nominate the challenge, uh, the, the ability of your choosing, but in in demanding such a massive price hike, what pose do you strike? What flex have you got to prove that you're worth it? I have. Each of you has to do this in your own way, and you all have to succeed. Okay. No, 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 I need you, I don't want no dice yet. I want you to tell me, Lico, oh, what okay. you're showing. That dice is not valid. I haven't seen it. it sucks to be you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay with that. All right, cool. I mean, as as a, a, a yowling kind of green kind of, you know, uh, a figure who was just dragged across the room by his tongue, you need to get some uh, some chutzpah back. So, everyone, just, just, just describe to me how you're looking Menacing. like the hero of the novel, however, whatever you're doing, and then uh, we'll see how it goes. Who's first? I jump up on the table and put both hands in my uh, my sides. Yep. And just smile, big tooth. Of course, there's missing teeth. My tongue's flicking its way amongst them. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, that seems like agility, the way you've leapt upon the table out of nowhere, like a spring jack-in-the-box job. And you can do it in a tricky way. Give yourself a boon. How'd you go? Did you make town or better? No. <laughs> no! So you, 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 you do have a fortune. You could have an instant win. Ooh, Otherwise, yes. you're going to trip over the table. Spend the fortune. Face, yeah, right, you spend the fortune. And suddenly, maybe because... Uh, or I'm still got hold of your tongue. He gives you a bit of a tongue boost and uh, <laughs> flings you that extra one centimeter you nearly didn't clear by. So your fortune is gone, but it has been spent wisely. Radang, <gasps> that's worth a gold. Okay, who's next with a flex? Uh, what's your flex? All right, I stand up to my full ten feet, crashing into the chandelier. Feet. Yes. Five yep. feet wide uh, yep. thing, and I'm going to turn both my hands into knives and just kind of slice, slice. Right. Some Fantastic. Let's look like a strength roll. Lay it on me. Uh, we're going to use that fortune of mine. <laughs> uh, there's also a free boon because it's September. And if you subscribe to Saving Throw during September or during this game, you get a discount on your subscription. You support this wonderful channel. And also, you give the players a boon. So, how much did you miss by? I missed by four. All right. Do you want to use the burn or the fortune? I'll use the fortune. All right. There it is. Fortune is gone. But uh, by, by, so what, you nearly just actually smashed the chandelier. It was nearly like a capital crime. Uh, but you've just pushed in among it. And it means your head is now glowing. 
might actually be on fire. It is unbelievably badass. All right, so the only person left to impress him is Oram. I've just Don't realized it's a new, is that a new Iron Man hat, Tom? That's fantastic. Uh, is it is the, year, yeah. not a new one. No, I, uh, I have okay. I, I have almost fully rounded out my collection of Iron Man hats. So now <laughs> I just <laughs> rotate them around. Uh, All right. It is one of my favorites. Cap sideways. Mine too. What do you do to impress him? Um, mm, 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 mm. So we're trying to look our most heroic. Is that the... That's, that's You're the trying name. to look like the thing he thinks he's hiring. And with the goblin flip onto the table, with the copper setting his head on fire uh, while doing with the, with, the, with the blade, they are very impressive. So, so just but just to kind of like review here, are we supposed to look like uh, uh, badasses that he has defeated or uh, c compatriots of his that are incredibly no, impressive? He, he he has hired you to be his friends because he's a cool yeah. guy and he mm -hmm. has cool friends. So, no, it's not one of those things where he's going to beat you up. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Um, Boy, I don't know that I want to. Um, I, so I have a technical question here about my one of my spells. Yep. If I cast Tremor, is that centered on myself? Uh, or can um, I center that on a, a different area? Oh, yeah. No, you can. I'm pretty sure you can throw that where you wish to. Oh, no. Uh -huh. All in a four-yard radius. Yeah. Oh, so I think that's on me, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because it's it's you're just literally shaking the ground, and it might knock a whole bunch of people over. Um, yeah, spill some drinks. It would be, it would be quite a thing. It'd be very yeah. funny. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, so I'm no, going... no. It's centered on a point you can reach. Look, rule book, Shadow of the Demon Lord. You should buy this book. It's awesome. All right. Yes, you can tremor wherever you want. As Wait, long as a, you can. A point oh, no, I can reach, reach it. Yeah, no, reach his touch. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, Schwab. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm going to pick up uh, the certain... Um, this tremor, tremor doesn't actually do any damage. No, it doesn't. It just rattles them and f knocks everyone over. Yeah. So I'm going to pick up a fresh bottle of champagne that is still corked, and yep. I am going to hold it up... And I am going to uh, wrap uh, one of the silver, you know, spoons that's on the table la very loudly against the side. And I say, my friends, it is a momentous night here tonight in beauty. And I want to celebrate something very special to me. It's the birthday of my good, good friend, Gilderoy Swallowtooth. We have... Had so oh, many actually, escapades actually, so... together, and he has saved my life on so many occasions. I cannot convey the depth of my appreciation for the majesty, the glory, the unparalleled prowess of this man. Raise your glasses, a toast to Gilderoy, here, here. And as I raise the uh, the the jigger of or what what are the what do they call it the the magnum of champagne into the air. Yeah. I cast tremor on it to pop the top off, and then kind of like <laughs> knock everybody around me, just playing over with the explosion. All campaign. right, the bang! It is the best birthday celebration ever. Ever. Uh, the cork flies off. Uh, many people are knocked over. I need an agility roll from Copper and Lico. Oh bother! Uh, and. Uh, <laughs> Gilderoy surfs it. Unbelievable. Rolls a 14 on his agility. 18. 12. 12 is enough? 12, that's fine. All right. Yeah. Bang. But it knocks over the snooty doorman. It knocks over the snooty maitre d'. Uh, it, uh, it knocks over some other people. But um, there is, there's great acclaim and cheering. And, uh, and uh, uh, <laughs> yes, yes, it, 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 it's, it's my dwarven birthday, you see. It's not, not my actual birthday. I have, I have two birthdays, of course, because you were all at my actual birthday party last week and I don't want to return the presents. But huzzah, 
<laughs> so, oh, you are definitely worth a gold each. You're magnificent, creatures. You're magnificent. All right, I shall, I shall, let us go and impress Elmo to Prang. Do all that, just as you've done. It'll be amazing. Thank you. We'll get her away from that cob spit. Uh, didn't we just, didn't we just do it? Is it, didn't that, that didn't do it? We have to go do she, it now. She's not but... here. What no, the she's crap? She's not here. <laughs> All right. Well, you've 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 escalated him up to three gold. Uh, so uh, he gets his. Uh, he waits for the matron to pick herself up. There's mm -hmm. mints everywhere. Like the mints have been kind of. So you can scoop up a couple of handfuls of those if you wish. As I walk around, I'm just like, hey, everybody, free mints, birthday mints, free mints. <laughs> have some birthday mints on the house. Uh, tradition. And uh, so uh, you will, uh, 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 with Gilderoy, get his coat and his walking cane uh, and his hat with the feather. Uh, this way, friends. All right. Very well. Okay. And you don't go very far. Um, you're just going to, to another establishment uh, called the, um, uh, the Winds of Song. Uh, and uh, now, now. If we just wait a little while, she's bound to come out and smoke. Um, so I think I think that will be the best. Uh, here she comes. Here, here she comes. All right. And indeed, a, a young woman um, like Gilderoy is about nineteen. She is about the same age. She really looks like a noble of beauty going through the goth phase. Oh. So she's got this kind of bat cloak going on and the mascara. She's got a long stemmed kind of cigarette holder. Uh, and, Clothes, uh, of course. Uh, yes, yeah, absolutely. There's got a fragrant smell. Uh, and she's coming out with this great big kind of hulking fellow uh, who's... Uh, uh, who, who looks a little kind of, you know, you know a little uh, rough and ready, uh, but they're, they're kind of chatting happily. Uh, and they come out to the lamppost to have a smoke. Right. Promenade. We promenade. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how are you promenading to impress Esmeralda Prang? What is the uh, the flex you do as you walk down the street? You've already flexed once to get the gig. Now you have to flex again. I need two out of three of you to succeed in something to look impressive. Um, just a point of clarification. He he. What was the name of this suitor that she's hanging out with? Cobb Spit. Uh huh. Cobb Spit. Uh huh. And you you can make a perception roll for me there, uh, Orum. Mm -hmm. Can I though? Can I? Can you? Nineteen plus one is twenty. Fantastic. So you're eyeing up Cobb Spit, and you note a couple of things. First of all, um, there's no. They're really friendly, but they're not like over each other. They're not being super affectionate. They seem to just really get on well. So and so you're going. All right, is that the suitor? You don't think Cobb Spit is a suitor at all. You think Cobb Spit's a friend. Uh, so yeah, that's what you see when you're kind of eyeing off, and uh, yeah, he looks like a noble of the town, but he's uh, clearly just um, kind of just a bit bigger than kind of these other kind of winnowy types. Uh, and uh, yeah, he's uh, there having a chat as she smokes. Come on, promenade, promenade. So uh, describe to me the promenade as. In a moment, I believe we're going to be hearing as a two clockworks pass oh. you in the street. They're coming towards you in slow motion because my clock says it's twenty nine past the hour. Chat's getting ready for it. Uh, so, what's the describe the promenade? You got three gold riding on this one. What's the what's the flex? I start gushing about his heroic acts. I can't believe you single handedly saved her not and not then the me, you fool, Not me, you metal fool. Just be yourself. Be my cool friend. I'm trying to make you look cool. No, I'm. It's okay. about you. It's association. Fine. That's what I'm paying you for. Mm, fine. You can't get good help. <laughs> All right. So anyway, there I am with this two-story tall fairy bastard, butt naked, eating every pumpkin in this town, and we're already having a 
crop shortage. And I just kind of give them a recap of the first session available on our YouTube channel. <laughs> uh, uh, and for more quality content, subtober, uh, September. Uh, all right. And there's the Wapang as those two ah. clockworks pass each other. All right. Make a, uh, make a, oh, you're telling us, oh, no, you're, it's still strength roll for you. Okay, great. Um, Orum and Lico, I need a flex from you. Well, I think Licko is going to do is go over there and relieve himself on the suitor. Just to prove how he doesn't care how noble this person is or what stature they have. All right. Licko's got that. I'm about There's to urinate a lot of on urine something. In this game. You know that. Uh, not from me. Uh, you you know that expression, Orem. Hmm. That's an assault. That's, that's an assault. He's going to get arrested if he does that. Cop spit is a noble. Uh, it's... It's, he's got that waddle he gets. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I will, uh, I will deftly uh, interpose myself between Licko's urination and uh, let. Uh, I will shield. Uh, <laughs> I will shield the suitor from and the lady from the from the stream of uh, desecration. Well, I don't, I don't think the stream is happening. He's been heading over there to commit this, mm -hmm. oh. what I would call a corrupt act. And you know, as I told you, uh, Lico, you're on Corruption 3. If you go to Corruption 4, like animals are going to start growling at you in the street. So you might want to consider keeping your bodily fluids to yourself, sir. Uh, but how are they? He's a goblin on the edge. And you say you've got in his way. You're not like, you know, having to interject right now, but you've definitely headed him off. Um, and now you have their attention because you're right up next to them. What do you say or do there, Aurum? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I say, um, uh, pardon me, um, madam, uh, sir, uh, my good friend Gilderoy here is too modest. I, 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 I have a friend who has some rather craven ambitions in the dead of the night, and he is wondering uh, if perhaps you could uh, point us out to the nearest establishment which might sell a bit of opium or other smoking type of substances. You see, Orem is trying to, uh, 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 Gilderoy is trying to straighten this young man out, and uh, unfortunately I have failed in taking him upon the uh, path of righteousness and morality. Uh, do you All right, so um, you can make your will roll. Uh. All right. Natural 20. Dang. All right. <laughs> uh, Esmeralda, she's, she's been smoking and her mouth just dropped open. Oh, you're an actual dwarven priest. You, you, what is it, the annals of the deceased? Yes, uh, it was originally founded by my great, 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 great times no, no, five. It's, it's the deceased. Tell me about the dead. She's got this kind of goth gleam in her eye that you're going to tell her all these kind of, you know, tomb stories. Uh, she is wonderfully impressed. And uh, you've, you've shielded the goblin. You're a friend mm. of Kilderoy's. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, we've known each other quite a while, as a matter of fact. Uh, he was kind enough to put us up here while we stayed over uh, in town. Huh. Uh, very well. Can you tell him that I don't like boys in the nicest way possible? I've been trying to, but he's just not getting it. Oh. I would be happy to pass that message along <laughs> after he pays us. <laughs> oh, quite. All right. Uh, well, anyway, uh, Gilderoy, your friends are to die for. And uh, oh, uh, do do come call on me soon. Get rid of him. How much? <laughs> uh, this is an act of upright morality. We don't need to take payment for this. <laughs> Uh, a tip would be nice. Get, All right. Getting, so, straight, getting straight men off the backs of a lesbian woman is just an act of pure good. It really <laughs> is. So it really Gil is. Gilderoy is so impressed. Uh, he pays you the three gold. 
I think that went smashingly. Uh, tell me, Lico, you had a purpose. What were you going to do? This. And I turn and <laughs> release. Uh, he backs away, <laughs> drops the coins. Thank you. That's all. Goodbye. Bye. All right. You now have, uh, as it's the sun is, the, the sky is lightening just a little bit as we've passed 4 a.m. You've got four gold, eight silver, two of which technically you have to pay back, and one copper. Ah, son of a bitch. So you were short, short five copper and two gold. Hmm. We need to find two gold. Well, we need to find five copper, too. Mm hmm. Yes, five copper, two gold. Yes, you're right. Yes. Insight check. <laughs> what? Hmm? Uh, it's it's actually a retrospective perception check, uh, <laughs> and I'm going to give you a bane on it because there was a lot of smoke and shit going on. Uh, uh, do right. both of us get to roll on this, or is it just of uh, copper? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. All right, I rolled a 19 on the die, a six on my bane though, so that drops it to 13. <laughs> Was Lico up to in that fire? He wasn't helping put anything out. You might have seen him lurking near some coin purses. Lico, what? What? Lico, yes. Lico, yeah. Hand it over. I only took a handful of mints. <laughs> Lico, I will hold you upside down and shake you until it comes out. You don't want to do that. He's done it before. <laughs> See it on YouTube. Um, <laughs> available on YouTube. Yeah, actually, I would like to see that. <laughs> I, I don't have access to that YouTube. Can you shake him upside down right now just so I can enjoy? <laughs> All right. Oh, oh, no. All right. Are you uh, squirming out of the way, Lico, or are you taking it like a goblin? I'm taking it like a goblin. So I'm squirming right. out of the way. So dang, my... dang, dang. How many of how, how many of our copper pieces shake out of his cloak is more what I want to know. <laughs> you were all completely broke. Um, so now there it is. You have four gold, eight silver, and six copper. Uh, except for the one I dropped on the floor. But hey, magic television. There it is. Look at all that loot. All right. You just need two gold mm. in the next hour and a half to or make twenty three right. minutes. <laughs> Okay, okay, time. Well, time. Yes. Let's... I'm going to try something kind of stupid. I'm going to try and ask someone nicely. For gold? Can you do that? Very possible. Okay. Can I have gold? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I don't know work. why you're expecting a different response, Copper, because that's the same response I would have given Licko or you. Just give me a second. Okay. Uh, all right. So we've esta we established earlier that I can talk to the uh, clockwork soldiers who wander around. Now. You can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, buddy. Hey, uh, sir. But, buddy. Uh, he hello, citizen. Sir, hello, citizen. Yeah, how you doing? You don't got to be formal. It's one uh, clockwork to another. Listen, that is I a have... strange question to ask. I am doing as I am doing. My gears are turning as are yours. Yeah, my gears are turning too. Can I ask you a favor real quick? Real quick. Can I borrow your eyes? I beg your pardon. First of all, I do not dispense favors. But if there is a crime being committed, please report it. Can you Me... borrow my eyes? Yeah. I do not need them, but they are my badge of office. So they will remain upon my head. Right. I just need them for I, I just need them for about fifteen minutes. Well, according to my watch, we have about twenty-one minutes. So if you could just let borrow them for just twenty-one minutes, I'll bring them right back. I promise. No. Clockwork to clockwork. Nah, borrow. You may not. Good day. Mm. All right. And is anyone around? Uh, hey. Um. Well, uh, no, because it's really late in the night. But he's right in the middle of a great big boulevard. Hey, um, Copper, I have do, an idea. You here. have been watching the way they walk. They do go down alleys. They do yeah. cut between as they crisscross. So right now he's right out in the middle of the open. Fair so enough. there's nobody around, but you never know who might come through as farmers are starting to kind of arrive. Um, so I, I'm going to 
I'm going to get together with Copper and Licko again, and I and I go that that is that is a brilliant idea, Copper. Um, we're clearly going to have to uh, disable one of these things. Oh, yeah. I don't. Why don't we set up an ambush in the surgery where it's all nice and quiet, and just tell them that there's some sort of crime going on in there, lure them in there, and then uh, all of Lick, can... Licko is looking really shamefaced about that. <laughs> huh? Am I missing something? Yeah. Uh, no, this is a great idea. We just have to get them in there. But they'll be alone. We'll take care of it. No one's getting in that door, Licko. I, I, I broke the lock. God damn it, Licko. I didn't want anyone going in there. What? It's can't, smarts. Can't you, can't, you, can't you unbreak it? I can try. Let's, let's head back just, to it. What if we just went to a dark alleyway? Okay, you certainly can try, Licko. You can absolutely try. Yeah, okay. I'm just thinking it's it's a place that has been established as a place where we could quietly have a combat where one of them isn't going to attract more of them. True. I don't. I only want to fight one of them. I don't want to fight three or four of them. Oh yeah. All right. So uh, you go back to the surgery, Licko. We didn't have you make a roll last time as to how well you jammed the lock. So make an agility roll with a tricky boon. Okay. So I got uh, seven eight on the roll. Oh, okay, that's good. Um, I, is that with the boon and your agility? That's with the boon and the agility, this was actually a terrible <laughs> roll. <laughs> How bad is the door open? Now, the the uh, saving grace here is that Licko is a terrible thief. <laughs> I mean, that, 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 is, that is her blessing. That is her blessing. <laughs> that like, thief hilarious. is just dog shit. I look, I look at him and I'm like, so you, you said you locked this, right? Yeah, best lock. It sound like it was Are destroyed. You, I just... Push it open. Oh, it goes that there way. There it is. Uh, bitch. <laughs> yeah, when, when you said you broke uh, the lock, you you broke the lock. You can anybody can get in here anytime. This this lock doesn't work at all. It doesn't hold anything. Everything is as you left it with kind of bits of organs and things around the place. Uh, so yeah. So, so who so who wants to create the distraction of like like to attract one of these things. Like if we know the pattern, we must know when one of them comes nearby by itself. Everybody make an intellect roll. Well, this is average. Everybody can make it. And uh, I'm going to give a boon to copper. Oh. Just because it's, you, you just I got, can't help. I got an 11, so that's... Still fail. That's fine. That's uh, a you got an 11, yeah. So you actually, because... You were exactly here before, and there, I think there was a warpang in the street. And you know you can that very soon now two are going to pass. So you've got two who have actually got eyes on the on the situation. But if you wait that out, one of them will be going on by himself. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, you you know exactly um, that there'll be one along after the warpanging of the hour. So let's set up a thing where. Uh copper and i are inside and licko like ducks down the hall ducks down the alleyway and ducks into the theater and i'll just yell thief stop thief and licko will train the 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 mechanical guy to run in after him right yeah yeah or Sounds like a actually i can i can run with i can run behind licko and maybe we get the construct in between the two of us i don't need to be waiting inside an ambush uh, and but a copper can be inside an ambush. Works for me. I can, I'll put on my damsel in distress voice. No, I'm gonna yell "Stop thief!" and chase and chase Licko into. Oh, the, okay. In that case, no. Because we want the because we want the construct, the golden eye guy, to to run into the operating theater. What if it chased me, and then you two follow behind construct, attack from behind, and then I attack when he turns around? We don't have time for this. Just someone do something. Yeah, I was just thinking it'd be easier to have Copper in the in the operating theater waiting to spring the trap. And you close the door. Brain. Close the door so we can keep it quiet. All right. All right. So Licko and I will be out in the alleyway waiting for the opportune moment for this guy to kind of be separated. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'm going to yell, stop, thief. Okay. Help, he's so, getting uh, away. Where is Copper? Copper's going to be. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was going to be in the uh, theater waiting for them. Wapang! Mm. So you can hear in this top street, they've just wapanged. Thank you, chat. 
And uh, now your mark is, uh, not this mark, that mark, uh, is turning and he's coming down the street. Uh, Copper's in the operating theatre. Copper, you're about to murder a clockwork. Yep. Now, last game, you were really straight up. Um, everything in this town seems harsh but legal. Everything is done fairly, I mean, except for hanging offences. Mm -hmm. If you go through with this, I am going to give you corruption because this is not justifiable to you. The others, you know, whatever, we're going to save the boss. But I'm just telling you, if you don't, if you go ahead with this, I'm, I'm giving you corruption. And that corruption's going to drop the second the clockwork goes down. I think I... I'm going to take the corruption, and I think also, like, a nice little visual for this. I still have, like, the little star when I was the constable of our little town. I yep. think this is the part where I finally let go of that. All right. There you go. All right. So you are there um, sweating oil as to what you're about to do, and uh, down he clang, clang, clang. Uh, the clockwork comes. It is now passing the alley. Stop! Thief! Hey, he stole my copper pieces! Get that little goblin! Get him! He's getting away! Stop! Stop, thief! Stop! I am the authority of beauty. Uh, so he turns into the alley. He's following Licko, uh, who and is I'm, zooming I'm chasing into the after room. Them. And you are coming after. All right. And the clockwork stomps into the room ducking under the lintel and sees this murder scene. It's absolute kind of organs and bits of liver and everything on the wall. So, like, his key's turning, he's taken all this in. And, and okay, now we begin a combat. Um, so, Shadow of the Demon Lord, there is a, what we call a fast turn and a slow turn. Um, if, you do, if you act in the fast turn, you can do an action. And if you act in the slow turn, you can do a move and an action. Um, now, uh, Copper and Licko, you're right there. You don't need to move because you're on the scene. Um, Aurum, you're going to have to move and then close the door uh, yep. because you're still outside at this point. Heroes always go before enemies. So you guys automatically get the drop. There's no initiative system. So uh, the clockwork is taking all this in. Uh, you've got the drop on him. Licko and uh, Copper, are you taking fast turns or slow turns? What are you doing? I, I will be taking a fast action to stab him and try, try, just try to make sure it's quick. Fast okay. Well. All right. Um, there is still a boon around the place to be had. Gentlemen, may I? Okay. All right. Now, um, I had just decided to give you a bane, believe it or not. Oh. As I do not lie. Uh, or I might. How can you tell? Because there's part of you that doesn't want to do this. So thanks, chat, for the subscriptions, but the boon and bane cancel each thank other. You. I'd like to thank uh, that wonderful uh, uh, viewer who gave me a bane. Thank you very much. You're right. You are striking. Defense is 14. Have a go. We uh, are looking at a 21. That is, you've just hit the special damage. Do you have the thing whereby if you get a 20 result, which is five over goal, is that something that warriors do? Uh, forceful yes, strike. Yes, forceful if, strike. Yeah, yeah. If total of attack yeah. rolls 20 or higher and exceeds target by five, attack deals an additional D6. An extra D6. You've triggered all that. So that's 3D6 plus two. Yep. Correct. Six. Two, eight, ten, twelve damage in total. Twelve. Okay, now we've established that their head spin 360, so as you step out and bang, turns its head to you and says, why? Ah, <laughs> oh. uh, Licko, have a go! Backstab. Now this head's turned around. Mm -hmm. All right, tricky strike. That is going to be 21. Oof. Wow, I think you've got your... Do you have a similar thing? I do not, just my backstab. So I'm doing an extra 1d6 damage. Yeah, yeah, you've got exploit opportunity, man. Once around, if your attack roll is 20 and 5 over gold, you get another turn before the end of the round. Oh, well, right? gonna... So you've just triggered that. You've exploited the opportunity. So you're going to get a whole other turn. So this is your first fast turn. Shadow of the Demon Lord, folks, you should play it. Bang! Yes. How much damage? Six damage. Six damage, uh, and you gave yourself the bonus. Sorry, that was 14 or 12 from you, sorry, Stephen. 12 from me. 
12, okay, 20, and six. Okay, Lico, do you want to take another fast turn or another slow turn? Another fast turn and stab him right again. Okay, go, go, go. Hey, we got raided. Thank you, GM <laughs> table. Hi, GM Thank table. You. I wish we were rolling this in person, another 20. Yay! Oh. You can only exploit opportunity <laughs> once around, but it is some good murdering right there. Okay, roll the damage. Four. <laughs> Okay. Garbage damage, but I'm hitting Four. a lot. All right, bang, bang. And so the 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 clockwork uh, has been assaulted and stabbed twice by this goblin rogue, and he decides Ooh. to attack Lico, but his body is turning to Lico, but his head is just still looking at you, going, why? Oh. And he is striking at Lico. All right, ah. clockwork's attack with a boon. Here he goes. You're going to do 2d6 plus 2. Smash! That's a 20. <laughs> so he does uh, 7 points of damage to Licko. Bang! Blood sprays! Aurum, you step into the room and close the door. All right. Bang. All right. Next turn begins. You're all within fast range of the clockwork, including you, Aurum. You can act now. Uh, and also, you can have your prayer at one point during the round to help someone out. Okay. So I will, um, if I can, then I'm going to lead off with an earth spike. All right. Nice. You certainly can. That's an action. You it says, spike it, it says earth, earth spike times two. That means I get to use it twice, not that I get You do. Okay. Uh -huh. You're making a will attack versus the clockwork's agility, not its yes. strong suit. Its agility is eight. Good luck. Oh, okay. Make a will attack. We're not fast robots. Natural one. Curses. <laughs> All right. I think that's the third the natural you, one. You've I've got your thing. You've oh, still your... I've still got my fortune, don't I? You do, yes. yes. I'll just straight up use my fortune at this point. Okay, then, bang! That succeeds then. Knocks it prone. Yeah. Bang! A it takes D6 damage. D6 damage. <laughs> One point of damage. Oh. All right, but now that it's prone, all your friends get a boon to attack it. Uh, yeah. Okay. And I want to do a prayer to, to grant somebody else a boon. Um... I'll give it. Uh, copper does more damage, so I'm going to give it to give Copper. It so Copper has two. Oh, you want okay. me to give it? You want me to get? Well, you, I, uh, uh, I roll with the boon already, and I get a boon because you've uh, kind of. Orum, Orum, this is a yeah. bit of a moment for you because right. you also were fairly righteous in our in our last game. So for you to pray for Copper to murder a fellow Clockwork is, I don't know, it feels a little. A little dubious, you know, yeah. to call well, the ancestors to bless this. I mean, you can if you want. I mean, it'll be okay. The entire situation is dubious because what ancestors want to help a goblin? Let's be honest. <laughs> uh, Point taken. Uh, All right. But, but I, I, I'll, 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 I'll redirect my prayer to Licko to help him strike. For more forcefully, because he's clearly has no problem hitting this thing, okay. but uh, he does not seem to know where the critical junctures are. Lico, that now means you've got two boons in the hopper, mm -hmm. so you can do your um, your other tricky skirmish attack, um, uh, because you skirmish with a bane, but that would remove one of the boons. But it's going to give you another d6 damage. So you're basically going to run around him and stab him again while not uh, taking any triggered actions. Sounds good. So you have made Licko extra murderous. <laughs> Andy G, thank you for the sub. Okay. Thank you, Andy G. Uh, does 12 hit? 12 is exactly his... Uh... No, his defense is 14. 14. Ow! Defense is 14. Shouldn't have listened to the GM who offered you, so it's <laughs> going to be you, Copper. You're going to have to do it yourself. Oh, this is, this is great. Oh, man, I get a 17. I work. Damage. Uh, 2d6 plus 2, so let's see how this goes. Oh, that's going to be a 10. All right, kadang! Down it goes, oh. crashes to the floor. Kadang! Robots can't and... look sad, but I look sad. All right, it is incapacitated.
incapacitated. You have not killed it. What? Yeah, that's the thing with clockworks. You don't actually kill them. Right. Like you've just, right. it's now an object. Kabang, down it goes. We should take the key. Well, let's just take the eyes and leave him here. He'll be fine. They can fix him later, and by then we'll be gone. Will he remember who did this? Well, 100%. yeah, but we'll be far gone, so does it matter? I don't know. True. I don't care. Dawn is writing up the sky. We are five minutes from the next Wapang, and that's not going to be a Wapang chat. That's going to be a... <laughs> That's fine. I mean, uh, if you want to just leave them incapacitated, we can just leave. That's fine. I We're pluck out the eyes. We got the money. I run. Why? <laughs> <laughs> All right. You've got the money. That's it. Uh, where are the other two gold I had saved for such an patient? Here they are. Look at all this cash you've got. Uh Six coppers, six silvers, and uh, eight silvers actually, but you might want to give the other two back. And six gold. Correct weight. Four minutes of game time. <laughs> Sun is starting to limb on the edge of the roof. Could not have been closer. Uh, can I fastball special Licko and see if we can get their Wait, are you giving Licko the gold and throwing him? Good point. Let's not do that. <laughs> uh, okay, so you arrive in the square. Um, if you in the distance, you can hear the morning brawl starting down at the farmers' market. Um, somewhere in a moment, a clockwork is going to go wah Oh no! As as there's no pang, and realize something is wrong. Oh, so hey, Licko, a, you should have locked. You should have uh, you should have locked that door behind us and broken the lock so nobody. No, they, they won't know what where. The they'll just oh. know there's a clockwork is missing yeah. and they'll know his patrol route. So, however, you all motor into the square and there is the gallows set up. There is the judge of beauty with his mirror face. There is Prendergast. Uh, there is uh, John with a hood over his. Well, they're about to put a hood over his head, and he says. No hood. It is okay. I forgive you. Uh, all right. There you are. Wait, we, we, we have, have it. it. We, have, we it. have it. We have it. We have it. All right. Objection. Objection. <laughs> yeah. All right. The judge of beauty turns and looks to you. Uh, what? You're about to execute an innocent man. What? We have the fun. man we is have guilty. Money. This man is not guilty, for he has paid his debt. And then we put the bag of money on on the, well, I don't know. Bailiff, count. All right. So Prendergast counts it all up. Do you, um, uh, are you giving him eight silver or are you holding the two back to return it? I suppose we should return the two. You should. You should. Okay. Prendergast was nice. So uh, he's going to remember. <laughs> It, it is all. It is all indeed uh, correct. There are six, six copper and six silver and and six gold here. Um, and up there in the crowd, you can see Gilderoy kind of swallow tooth uh, with some other woman, kind of you know elbowing her, saying they're my friends, and she's eye rolling and you know kind of you know. Yeah, you uh, got over that fast. <laughs> I I turn uh, to him and I'm like, swallow tooth. <laughs> What's up, buddy? You're the man. Right. Hey. Uh, so, um... Let me know when you want to get that syphilis treated. I can cure that. <laughs> All right, that's, uh, uh... He's checking his trousers. She's leaving in disgust. And... Uh, John is exhaling. <gasps> oh, my friends, you have done it. You have done it. As he's being left, let down, and, and Prendergast is... Very, very well done, and, and it was all legal, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. I, I, I knew it would be, especially a clockwork. I find clockworks to be very reliable and honest. Mm. And now, would you like a celebratory cherry? It is breakfast, but I find it is quite a good breakfast beverage. No, oh, thank you. We need we to have be on our way. We must go. All right. So the judge is just staring at you with his mirror mask. And uh, you have rescued John. It has been a success. You but at what price? Money. Six copper, six silver, and six gold. But a stupid yeah, question. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, stupid question. 
<laughs> All right, and that's it. The waha. As somewhere a clockwork goes to high five his buddy and realizes he's missing. What are you doing? Hey, John. Um, we got. We might want to just leave. Where this yeah. town seems sort of like a weird episode of Star Trek: The Next Generation. Let's just kind of. You say things from your annals of the dead that sometimes I do not understand, but I will nod and pretend that I did. Dwarven culture is a complex series of tales interwoven across the generations. No, it's not, Aurum. You just need to study it harder. <laughs> he is studying his best. So you that's my great, 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 great grandfather, Darmok. He got in this uh, trouble at this place called Tanagra. Uh, oh, um, my God, you nerd. I don't have you time to nerd. get into it, but... <laughs> Uh, we're we have a, Mr. Lama I'm shoving you in a locker. Thank you, uh, thank you, Simi David, for the what? And then we've got a whoo, and we've got a whoo. Uh, so yeah, you're definitely going to get busted soon. Uh, we should return to our inn at the Golden Stranger, at the Welcome oh, Stranger. No. I don't know that we can Why stop by, attached? pick up our stuff, and then I think it's a, you know, it's a bright, crisp morning. Let's get yeah, on the we, road. We, 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 all of our things are there. And it's true. Like, you've all of your kit, all of your extra stuff is there. Yeah. We'll stop and pick up our stuff, and then let's be on our way. I, I am invigorated by the evening's activities. <laughs> the road calls. Oh. All right, so back to the welcome stranger. Uh, and there's Madge. Uh, and Madge is just uh, coming up the stairs from the cellar at high speed. And she's the, the publican and she slams the door and puts her back to it. Whew, bit of a rat problem. It'll be fine. Ah, hello, guests. Do you have a nice night? Yeah. Uneventful, really. Not yeah. much to speak of. Oh, Mr. McBoatface, they paid you fine. I was hoping they would. Well done, boys. Well done. Yep. Sadly, this is where we will have to part ways. Uh, we're going to hit the dusty trails. I think this calls for a breakfast beer. Merck and Burr's old peculiar. And she pulls a beer in a, in a big metal tankard and hands it to John. And he flinches back from it and she drops it. And the beer is spilled. Uh, no, no, thank you. No, thank you. I, I, I will not drink now. Uh, come, we should go upstairs. Okay. That was a waste hey. of a good beer, Oren. Hey, uh, boy, I was just thinking about uh, about yesterday and and uh, the other day before and and all the great stuff that we sold. Do you remember all the different products that we sold? We sold uh, uh, Goblin Swill and uh, what was that drink? What was the drink that got us all in that trouble that we had to that had to light on fire? That secret orcish tradition that you brewed up. What was that called? Oh, oh yes, yes. That that was the uh, the Green Revenge. Uh, it is both uh, an, an alcoholic and a laxative. Uh, it is used cautiously, uh, but um, the euphoria is quite quite exceptional. It really was the Green Revenge. It absolutely passes your memory chest correctly. Uh, let us go upstairs. Uh, yes, let's go upstairs. Okay, so you go upstairs to your room. Everything is as you was. I mean, Madge's got the key on the wall. She gives you the key. Um, your room is out. You left it, except that the mirror, which is on a wooden frame, has been pulled into the centre of the room. Uh, cl close the door. Sure. Uh, and his face collapses. <sighs> it all runs into mud and twigs and leaves. And he puts it back together, and it's Mr. Crumpet. Well, I suppose you know now that I'm a changeling. Uh, we, we, we had not told you, and I'm sorry for the imposition. Wait, so you're both? No, 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 no. No, um, John has gone on ahead uh, because what we are doing is far more important than the selling of orcish drinks, even though they're very tasty and flaming. Um, he, he left you this letter. Well, this I is a contract read. to buy somebody's kidneys. What the son of a... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, he hands you a letter. It is from John. If you are reading this, you have saved Mr. Crumpet, and I thank you. Um, meet me here at the next full moon, and I will tell you more. The very fate of the world depends on it. 
your friend John slash Garrick slash Bodie McBoatface. <laughs> well, damn. We're, we're sorry for the deception. I hope you'll forgive us. But when it was clear that he was going to be killed, I volunteered to take his place. So you have went to rescue him and you've rescued me. How can I ever repay you? Well, I would say with six copper, six silver, and six <laughs> gold. And it also goes to you, you've never seen him handle him handle the money. He's a changeling. He never touches copper. He never touches metal. All right. So I'll, I'll see what I can do. Uh, will you take a credit? Um, you gather your things and leave before the crimes can be discovered. Heading on up the road where there is a riot in the farmer's market because there is just not enough food. There was not enough food in Grantham. There's not enough food in Beauty. There's just not enough food. So you slip out the gate and head on your way. Thank you for playing. Huzzah! You rescued the boss. Yay! <laughs> we did the heroic thing in the grossest way possible. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> oh, heroic. I told you we should have jumped back did stop earlier. <laughs> um, uh. Thanks, everyone, who's tuned in. Um, huge thanks, of course, to Stephen Jamison and Tom, our fantastic players, and apologies from Abria. Uh, circumstances of technology have conspired against her, but she was sorely missed. Thank you to Dom behind the scenes, uh, who's kept the tour going even when it fell over, and he summoned it back with technomancy. Uh, and thanks to Rob Schwab for designing uh, this amazing game, Shadow of the Demon Lord, which I think is just a ridiculous story engine like no D20 game I know. So check that out. And in fact, somebody is going to uh, win a PDF. Uh, you've got to enter enter giveaway in the chat and put an exclamation mark or one word, exclamation mark, enter giveaway. So we'll give you a uh, few uh, moments uh, to get that in. And then uh, Dom will be sending one of you a fabulous PDF of this. Um, while folks are entering, um, let's talk about what happens next in Shadow of the Demon Lord. You've just finished your novice path, and the, you, you're a priest, Orum, uh, Lico, you're a rogue, and uh, uh, Copper, you're a warrior, which means you get an expert path to choose from. Uh, so has anybody given any thought as to what expert path you would undertake? I have decided to go the path of the fighter. The doubling down, warrior to fighter, it's all about that. Now, we forgot that you got a point of corruption, my friend. I so did. when you get a point of corruption, Shadow of the Demon Lord, you have to roll a d20, and if you roll equal to or under your current point of corruption, then you get a mark of darkness, which has to be pronounced just like that. So uh, what'd you roll? Well, I rolled a seven, so I do not believe I get a mark of darkness. That's quite good. You owe me a dollar. All <laughs> right, but you are so all right. So you're going to be a warrior. Okay. Oh, then, what's what's Lico going to choose for his expert path? Lico is going to delve deeper into thievery. He wants to be better at stealing things. Yeah, well, he couldn't be worse at it given the uh, the incident with the door. So, yeah, good choice. All right. So, Ro and Rose can become assassins and other things. All right. Tom, has Orem got any life plans or is it what is foretold for him? Um, boy, that's a good question. I feel like I used my Earth abilities the most this time around, so I think I'll keep going down the either the cleric path or I'm not sure what the warden does. So, I uh, the consider... warden is an extra expert path. It's available in the Demon Lord's Companion, so check it up. But that's how the characters unfold in this game. You get a and you can multi class. It's not really multi classing. You just take a new path, and they all stack together. Then at fourth level, you get an extra buff from your ancestry, and on it goes. So great game. I've talked enough about it. Everybody is ready to go. Thank you so much. And uh, did we have a winner uh, in the uh, Dom? As I'm just looking at the chat for the copy of the rules. All right. And I saw a version of myself from 10 seconds ago, and I was doing this, and it was quite embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> all right. I'm just waiting for the ping of Dom to say it's something. It's in the somewhere. it's in the you chat. You got it. Mm -hmm. You got it. it. All right, Genru Zero is the winner of a PDF of the Demon Lord. Thank you, one and all. So you should May... whisper your email address or whisper to Dom, and Dom Please will. Please do. 
connect the uh we'll do all that thing yeah thank you so much everyone i loved it thank one you last one pang <laughs> uh my absolute pleasure all right let's we pang our way out everybody what pain? pain. pain. All right, that will do. Have a good night. I'm Bye. just going to keep speaking like a moron until Dom tells me we're out. <laughs>